I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. I love it. And we are live here at After Hours. I'm Dave Palumbo, joined by my co-host John Romano, the entire Whack Pack. And we got the uh, Jer our Jersey brothers and sisters here, even though they don't all live in Jersey anymore. <laughs> uh, special guest, George Majorano, and uh, our good friend, the muscle chef, Carlo Filipponi, who uh, I just got done eating some of his thechickentown.com food that he had sent me. Thank you very much, Carlo, once again. Thanks, Carlo. Dave. Thank you guys. Thanks, Dave. What's up, Carlo? Carlo. Hi, uh, Carla, when you first sent me the first the chicken pound package, which, by the way, if you go to the chickenpound.com and I think you use RX muscle, you get 10% off. Uh, when I first got my first order from you guys, which is basically chicken packed in half pound packages, but a pound at a time, and I ate it. Little did I know that I was, I was, on, a, I was on a fish binge. This was a couple of years ago. I was eating fish every day. Uh, now, 90% of my food that I eat is, is the chickenpound.com all day long because it's so convenient and it tastes so good and it's actually so healthy that uh, my wife's always like, you're having it again? I said, I'm a creature habit. Carla, you're doing a full meals now, right? Not just not just the chicken. No, no, just chicken. Come here. Show us. And it, the other 10% is George's cookies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my daughter wants to show her, her artwork up here. She's... <laughs> She's I love the, home, the home, colors are home awesome. School. This is a Picasso. For those of you watching out there, the bidding will start at a hundred thousand, and uh, <laughs> we'll only go in ten thousand dollar increments. So it looks, looks okay. better in Hunter Biden's <laughs> straw <laughs> bowl. You, you stole that. I was just about to say that. You, you... <laughs> I said for and ten percent will go to a means uh, legal. Uh, yeah, there legal you go. Fund, yeah. Oh. Hunter, if Hunter Biden can get half a million for his his cocaine straw <laughs> color graphs, I mean. Uh, <laughs> Taylor should be able to give couple, you know, 50, 60 grand for that. I mean, easy, right? <laughs> I mean, she's a real artist. So, so wait, Carlo, I, I asked you before you cut off, you're doing like complete meals now, like, right? Not just the chicken, no. not just the meatballs no. and the chicken. Chicken breast and chicken meatballs. And we will be doing a mar we will have marinade soon and burgers and stuff like that. We're burgers? adding products. But oh, you're not wow. doing yeah. like you're not doing like the little meat, like the little box with the vegetable. John, and that's the, potato. the stupidest, biggest pain in the ass of all time. He's no, the it's smartest. Insane. That's why I was wondering if he was doing it. Because no, I'm glad to hear that you're not. Started that. I started doing that back in 2005, and I did it for a bunch of years. And then, to be honest with you, once the business started growing, is when you really got your dose of reality, and that it's not a sustainable business model for anybody. I don't care who's doing it, how big they are now. They better be careful because it's not. It's not scalable. It doesn't it's seem Mr. like. Mr. Scalable. Stick to, your, your, stick to cookies, right? <laughs> yeah, I would stick to cookies if I was Mr. G. Listen, he's supposed to call me. I, I have a facility for Mr. G. He, we talked about it, and then he disappeared on me. But um, uh, what happened? He's well. He's been to my place. I told him. I said, "Let's market." There he is, George. George, what happened? What happened? Oh, for a change, his, his audio is not working. It's, it sounded too <laughs> successful, so he yeah, ran. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we can't even hear him now. <laughs> your, your microphone's muted, George. George, for a change, you have audio problems. When Greg's giving you a, a tips on tech. Uh, yeah, wow. Are we at that you're, point you're, where oh, Greg is giving George you tech tips? Really fucked up for Holy that. shit. <laughs> hey, you hey Larry. Larry, I, I, yeah. I'm now we hear you. I need you All right. Yeah. Here. So you got to open it. I found I'll a shopping the question. We, hold on, Joe. Uh, now you want to answer? All right. Answer the question. Go. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I was waiting for my partner to to uh, to do the the art and the marketing part of it that we were coming up with. Now it's it she it's done now. That's what I was waiting on. If you want to revisit, we can bake it. We can pack it. We can do everything for you. All you have to do is market it. All right, you got that's you, you got it. Yeah. 
I have the facility for it. So you know that you've seen my facility. So. Yeah, it's it's uh, your facility is unbelievable. It's, Thank you. It's, it's, it's not you could eat off the floor, literally. Thank you. Thank I mean, it's amazing, uh, amazing, and your and your product is unbelievable. By the way, Thank anybody's you. ever had that? You've did. It's like grilling your own chicken, literally grilling your own chicken in your backyard, or or making your own meatballs. You can't even make them better. Thank so, you. So why aren't you taking advantage of Carlos' opportunity? Dave, I am. I had to wait. Oh. Dave, it if sounds I say I'm doing successful. something, I, I had to wait. Oh, okay. If I had to wait for my if I if I made a promise to somebody to to wait for for, for them, they were sick for a while. I had to wait. Okay. You know, it's it's you know. You have to act. I am acting. Did you just see? Did, There's a did window. You just, There's a, John, tell him about the window of opportunity. I, I'm t- all, all, I, all you got to do is look at the last five guys who made cookies and got successful at them. They started doing it years ago. I mean, they went boom. I mean, look, they, so I'm, I'm being honest with you because I love you, bro. I'm going to steal your idea. John, they had a, really? John, they had a half. John, hold on. They had a half million followers. You understand that a half million? You that's have three hundred thousand subscribers. Okay, now I hold on. You're now at, we do. Now I got. We everyone did then. There. We had two hundred and fifty then. You could yeah, have started there. I can't, you can't market something half half baked. How would you do it half baked to through two hundred to three hundred thousand subscribers? I gotta Just have the buy facility. the cookies. Here's Mr. G's cookie. We eat them on the air. Everybody loves them. They're begging you for them. If you got an order for fifteen hundred cookies. Out of 300,000 people, you would have a hard time filling that. Yeah. And so I, I'm just saying, Georgie, I, you, we, you, have way, hold you, on. you could have been you could have been in a number one position by now. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be bigger, I'm gonna be bigger than that. I'm gonna be bigger than, than all the put together. And I'm gonna be 80. I think Amin's looking for a job. I mean, what how about <laughs> how do you feel about calling them guru cookies? I think that would be a good name. Guru cookies. <laughs> how about Carl make a special line. The, the, George gives you the dessert, and Amin will give you the training part. How about that? It's a George, George comes up and sees me. I promise you that we'll make it work for him. We'll handle oh, all wow. the shipping, all right. and uh, we'll work with him on the marketing and how to do it. George, when we started the Chicken Pound, we had no followers. Uh, you know, I'm not as big of a name as some of the people in the industry, but we just kept plugging out a good product. Um, we satisfy, you know, 90% of our customers are extremely happy. Of course, you can't make everybody happy. Unfortunately, we try. Um, but you start with the product and you start with putting it out there professionally, labeling it correctly, making sure that you get it out to them in a timely manner. And if it's as good as your cookies are, because I know they're great. I've had them myself. They'll come and they'll order them. I promise you. So whenever you're ready, come see me. Your friends. Right. Okay. To the show, I appreciate you. I think you're a great guy with a great concept. When we hone in on what you should be doing, a handful of things, one to five, I think that you're you'll you're, you'll be successful. So call me. You know where I am. I will. Carlos got distribution too, which is great. You know. I gotta tell you, I love Carlos' freaking Italian food. Holy shit! I That's mean, the- Carlos made some. Oh, he's a great. He's a great. Chef. I always yeah. say though, you know what? If you can cook, you can cook even healthy oh, stuff. Good though. The the now, cilantro chicken that I eat from him. That's I like that. I've decided that's my that's I get that all uh, that's all I want now. Cilantro that's that's chicken. the one I like too, yeah. The cilantro was so good that the juice that it comes in, I like pour it over the food after I warm it up. I'm like licking my fingers, it's so good. <laughs> and and you could it, you could eat this stuff while you're dieting. I mean it, it's uh, it's it's so easy and and I, I I I can't get over the concept. It's just it blows my mind. I, I hope yeah. you're making money on it, Carlo, because it's a great product. We're, yeah, thankfully we're doing okay. Um, the lemon, the cilantro, and the balsamic recipes are the yeah. recipes that I used when I was getting ready for my shows, and I competed. Delicious. For so I just had a guy who competed who who ate your products all the way up to a show. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Missy, fantastic. Uh, you know, Missy Truscott eats our stuff right up to the Olympia, and you know she does a black first um for conditioning right and we just got michael hearn on board um oh, wow. so he loved our meatballs he started out very casually you know i have a relationship with mona her and i have been friends for years right. and he's been with right. another company that shall remain la- nameless um and he really we don't you know was getting our stuff <laughs> kind of throughout 
And then finally he said, listen, I'm going to start, you know, I'm jumping on board with you guys if you'll have me. And we said, of course, you know, yeah. uh, he's a, but he's, he's a marketing genius. Yeah. Oh my God. He, get, he eats a pound of our meatballs at a clip. You know? <laughs> well, I, I'll, let me tell you something about the meatballs just to give you a, a, for instance, the chicken is so clean and it's so good that when I eat the, the, the turkey meatballs, uh, the chicken meatballs, excuse me, um, they, I'm absolutely addicted to them, but I feel guilty eating them because there's cheese in them and there's you know, there's a little there's other ingredients. It, it's not hey. <laughs> hey. it's not pure. So like I feel guilty eating them every day. So I only eat them a couple times a week. But you got the flavor down amazing with those things, and I've compared them to because they have they now have chicken meatballs in the supermarket in the frozen yeah. section. It's a lot more expensive than yours. And they taste a little softer, but what they're doing is they're padding it with like cheese and, and breadcrumbs. It's not, it, it's not as much meat in there. It's not as much protein. Yeah, gluten and soy free. So it's yeah. gluten and soy free, and we have nine ingredients in there. And it's literally chicken, rice flour, cheese, sea salt, black pepper, parsley, onions, and garlic. So yeah. it's nothing that you wouldn't have in there. The chicken is a little mixed. There's there's little breast meat in there, but there's also thigh meat in there too. So it's right. uh they're as lean as they could be. And because we don't have the breadcrumb, like you said, in there and the other fillers, they're going to be a, a little, you know, the texture is going to be a little tougher, I guess you can call it. But if you like meat, it's kind of like what meat tastes like without bread, right? So yeah. I, I kind of like that texture. That's what I would have. You know, yes. get my, yeah, my they meatloaf. They're like little meatloaf balls almost. It, yeah. It's unbelievable. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's Jay Brable. laughs> Before she was shy, now she wants to get on yeah, camera. Yeah. <laughs> I love now, it. Before, all right, we got we got stories to tell about about Mike Quinn in a little bit, but I want to get to Larry. I have, Larry, I was driving past this uh, shopping center in Cape Coral here, like on the border of Cape, like North Fort Myers. All right, Shayla, go go do your art. Go do art. And <laughs> go make money. I asked my wife because she's from here. I'm like, how long has that shopping center been abandoned? Like it's been. She said it was well the. Old... <laughs> <Get out. laughs> she said it was the old Walmart. Walmart used to be there. It's a huge shopping center with a huge parking lot. I'm like, man, this would be a great gym. Um. I need your expertise. I, I, I think I need you to come down here and assess it, Larry. How many square feet is it? It's enormous. I don't know. I got to get the I got to get the specs. I don't even know what they're looking for. The place has been rented. It hasn't what? been rented or leased out for years. My wife said for years. So there's a website you go on now? Called, called Property Shark. There's nothing in there. No. Go on PropertyShark.com. Yeah. Okay. And you'll pay like five dollars, and you can get the full report on the building. Who owns it? Right. Who owned it before? Whatever uh, I have a real big girl idea. She can probably get me all that info on it. Telling you, I think it would be a great. Are you, you going to do a species gym day? I don't want to run anything, but I have people who say they want to run. I know that uh, Larry's a you know a gym fanatic. You know about setting up gyms, and I think I like his whole idea where you can do like a twenty four hour. You can just go in anytime you yeah, want. Yeah, you don't have to do anything. Yeah. You just set up the twenty four yeah. hour system, and people go themselves. You might have a couple of workers just work at the desk a few hours a day to sell drinks yeah. and sign up members and whatever, but the gym will run itself. I think I could get Jimmy to bowl and Greg just to stay hang out at the gym all day and just entertain people. It'd be you know how like when you have these these restaurants, they get these old these athletes that were like former boxers, like just to hang out there all day long, like Jake Lamada's place, you know. Just have Greg ha hang out all day, pay him a salary just to hang out and bullshit I'll talk with everybody. Everybody here off. Hey, to people would show up. You know? Yeah. Oh, they would show up. People of course, they would show up. up. To hear his stories, I would show up. Just give me the he address. The same and ones every day. No one would care. <laughs> give me the address, and I'll get you all the information you need. <laughs> give me right. in the other. Yeah, in the other great audience. Me and Jimmy little... would be. We'd be eating uh, Carlos meatballs and. I knew you put a chicken pound of a restaurant in there. The cookies. Sure. We'd have George's <laughs> cookies. cookies, like chicken. Have a little waffles. table. A little table with the two. The, four the only problem there. I foresee you having is the price of the rent because it's too huge. Yeah, you know what though, George, uh, John? It, it, Ten years, my wife said no one's been in there. Yeah, that, 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 that doesn't matter. What matters no. is how much are they going to charge you every yeah. month? Because that's well, that's well, there's 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 the issue. Well, that is the knife Hold in the on. heart. Is there's the rent. A, there's a couple of things you got to look at when you have a property that's been abandoned that long. Right. This is what I've run into. Mm -hmm. 
maybe even if it's a good rent, but you'll go in there and you'll find out like the sewer is like uh, not working. Our air conditioning the, shot. And the place needs, you know, $500,000 worth of renovation right. just to make it right go uh, for the city to approve it because everything's broken. That's one reason it might be sitting empty so long. But well, won't the landlord do it, Larry? Won't no. do it. It, de it depends on the landlord. Some landlords just well, you let, get in a, they let it sit empty it. and take I a loss a because they'll they'll Every just collect uh, you know use it as a write off. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Or they'll have, eventually burn it down. You buy the building. That's what I got to find. That's what you need to do. Yeah. Then you well, can, so then you can section off some of it, rent some of it out. Carol, Carol, yeah. right? <laughs> but, oh, Larry will tell you, man. That's the that's the biggest the biggest worst expense in a gym is the fucking rent. Yeah. And if, if you can own the building, that okay. is the way to go. Right, because otherwise you're going to put re right. you know renovations in some other guys. But that's what they want. They want you to. That's right. Probably, Larry's right. That's probably why they haven't rented it. It's because everything in there is fucked. The plumbing, the electrical, everything. Right, you, got any, you got any money stashed from the uh, the old uh, Mexican days? <laughs> I have a little cash. <laughs> <laughs> well, Larry, why are you putting money in for the TIs then? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get, we'll get, whatchamacallit, what's his name? Um, um, who did Lindbrook Golds? Uh, we had him on the show. What's his, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Not sure, I feel easy. No, the guy is. We just had him on the show a couple times. You know, from he he owned the gym in um, Limbrook Golds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. What the hell? He's is friends that? with Jimmy. I, 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 oh I, yeah, yeah. He's always listening, and I and I and I'm I'm. It's called I'm having a senior moment. I, I'm blanking. <laughs> Sometimes there's a situation like there was a building I was looking at for a while. It had been it's it's also been sitting empty for like ten years. Yeah, and the owner is just some rich guy in Beverly Hills who just in his eighties, and he's so old he doesn't care. Right, like right. he doesn't want to spend a dime to fix the plumbing and things like that. Sure, and the place is in just disarray. That's why it's not renting. Yeah, but Maybe it's a prime get... location. I tried to work with negotiate, and the real realtor tried to get him to do it. He didn't want to spend a penny on it. This gym, it's a little recessed off the main road, but I mean, you can see it from the main road. It would, it would be perfect because the parking is huge. And like I said, if I got, and I, then I'd have an incentive to get Jimmy down there and Greg and we'd put him in there. And I'm telling you, the place would be crawling with people just wanting to hear stories every day. Find <laughs> out, Dave. <laughs> Dave, Dave, find out. Go find yeah, out. We'd have, to, we'd have to get a cup and an equipment company to sponsor it. Maybe give us some free equipment too. Panetta. Yeah. You could, look, you got yeah. the massive marketing. You promoted yeah. you know, the, right, all right, the companies. Right. <laughs> have a have a have a have have all the listeners chip in money. They all own they all, all own a little piece. There you go. With your, with your that's, that's what I want, George. I people texting me all hours of the night about what, what they're uh, no, like the Green Bay Packers, like they all, like the whole you know. <laughs> there's I don't want gym, anyone to own it. There's I a gym in, in Waco, Texas called Underground Performance. Right. And uh, it's owned by an old school bodybuilder guy. And, and I went in there a couple years back and it's an awesome gym. They have the best equipment, huge space, cheap rent, but they were running it like pen and paper. His wife was trying to do everything like real old school. Uh, and I, I hooked him up with the keyless entry system and the uh, billing company and all that. And right. now their place is running like clockwork. They were losing $3,000 a month wow. just on not, on money not getting collected because they're trying to right. horse and yeah, buggy gotta, everything. I, I love that keyless system. That that's that sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah. The gym I go to uses it. It's the best. There's, ne there's never the one of the worst things that impedes my, you know, continued <laughs> adherence to going to the gym is like the hour I gotta go. You know, if I got to worry about the gym closing, that, that uh, yeah. shoots the whole fucking thing. Because I like sometimes I like to train late, like like Greg. You know, and it's it's like I don't want to worry about when the fucking gym's closing. Just well, Greg would love Greg would love it because he'd have a key. You go there all the time. You can go two, there. At he'd be there two in the morning. I know it'd be perfect. I literally <laughs> have people in the gym like all, yeah. all hours of the day and night, like all all night long. There's people in there. We use the key, 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 key Yeah. Key yeah. Key. Holidays, everything. 
the well, think about never it. Jimmy the Bull would open up at four thirty in the morning because he he's got the mil, you know he's got the the Marine Corps you know Marine wake up. Corps. <laughs> Greg Greg would just be leaving, so they they'd slap hands as Greg was leaving. <laughs> you know, that was over. No, we'd sit, I sit around for another two hours. To <laughs> that you probably would, yeah, 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 yeah. you probably would. But, about yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And then Jimmy, and then Jimmy would. So Jimmy would leave. Greg, I mean, Greg would leave. Jimmy would get there. He, Jimmy would last to about what noon, one o'clock. And then we'd have uh, Mr. G come in. <laughs> yeah, but Jimmy can't train until nine when the noise ordinance ends. This is going to be in Naples, right, Dave? <laughs> no, not in Naples. I no, mean, no. I mean, Cor either Cape Coral or North Cape or Coral. North Fort Myers. I don't know. It's like right on the border there. So yeah, I was up this morning at four, so I went. I went surfing really early. Right, you're ahead. surfing. You know, I needed someone at the gym at that time. I so. was up at four too, but I hadn't gone to bed. I'm going to show you something. <laughs> what? I don't know if you can see this. Hold on, let me let me let me zoom at the you gym. Oh, you're looking at your gym now. This is a camera system. Yeah. Right. I can see everything, like every room. I uh, could just I can't watch it. I don't want to watch the gym all Larry, day long though. Larry, do you got a little speaker on the wall so you could just say something? Hey man, put that back right there. <laughs> yeah, I've I've actually done it before. Dude, that's what Bob Bonham used to do. Bob you gotta have, but, yeah, but you gotta have Charlie Arm's voice. Yeah. <laughs> Wait in his face. You know, can you imagine? Just look. <laughs> yeah. Just when you see him. <laughs> they would get Charlie to do a few hours at the gym. There. Yeah, no, yeah, just have Charlie just do like a loop, you know, a tape record, you know. Oh, forget about it. And you push the button, you go, or get out of the get front out of desk. Get him a nice armchair and he get like a king's throne and put him at the front desk for a few hours a day, you know. <laughs> Charlie, that guy hasn't paid. <laughs> Actually, I just, the, uh, they filmed me for the Boston Lloyd documentary, and we did it in the gym. Oh, you did? Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah they're coming hey, out Bob Bottom used to have that thing, and he would call the gym. If he saw you leave weights out, he would call. He would call the front desk. Yeah. Tell Joe Matarazzi he left the fucking dumbbells up at a, at a rack. He's called me the whole time. Yeah, right, Carlo? You know. Call me Carlo. Hey, there's a hey, dumbbell. Yeah. The incline bench press. Tell the guy to put it back. <laughs> yeah, dude. Somebody used to cable cross over the handles on the floor. Get it up. <laughs> my, question, my question is: Did Ronnie Coleman ever put back the uh, the two hundred eighty pound dumbbells that, that Bob made from with his name yeah, on them? Yeah. No, I don't. I, he I did don't put them back yeah. when he was done. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. I mean, that's that's like there's only one person that would use those. So I mean, it's right. they didn't put he them back. Them. You kind of know who it was. Yeah, 280 pound dumbbells. Yeah, they were humongous, man. They were like, they were, they were just two, I thought they were just 200s. No, yeah. no, 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 there were 280s. 280s, 280. <clears throat> Did you bench press those? Could you do bench press? Oh, they were too wide. To yeah, no, the any partners put them back. <laughs> yeah, yeah what, what is Carlos saying? Baby. Lightweight, oh, baby. Yeah, Carlo what's talk Carlos yeah. saying? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> My, <laughs> thank you. Um, they were 200s. They weren't 280. Yeah, I thought yeah, 200s. No, they were higher than 200s. No, they no. were 200s. I'm yeah. telling you, he had more than 200s there because Weinberger had 200s. I no, know they're... Bob had more than that. Like at least the ones that said Ronnie Coleman on the outside, there were 200s. Yeah, yeah they were 200s. 200s. He, 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 had, he would there. flat them press them for 10 okay. reps. So they were definitely 200s. They were that's, not too. That's not that impressive. George, were you ever at Bob's gym? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that? Not you. Not you. Wait, that? Oh, wait a minute. Arm. Wait a minute. Back up. Oh, yeah. Who said that? George. George Which said George that's not impressive? impressive. Are you fucking kidding what, me? What? 200 pound dumbbells? <laughs> 280? Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, I tried them once and I was 300 pounds. 280 fell over with them. Yeah. <laughs> I could do 200s when I was, when I was training. Where? I don't know. Anyway, Who wherever they, I do 180s. Yeah, you, you, they hardly <laughs> ever have them, Georgie. Yeah, yeah, because the, what happens is they're so they're so wide. You can't hold you can't, them up. Yeah. If, yeah. Once you go, you can't. You, you'd be holding them like this, at, at, you know. At, yeah, doing like that. Yeah, you could do it. Victor yeah. Richards, he had like two forties, and he fucking. I was it's like, holy Christ! I had to wheel him over to the friggin' thing, like Botswana the slave boy. I'd be fucking rolling that shit over. You know I mean, saying? I could do one arm dumbbell rows with those. I could do one arm dumbbell rows with like three hundreds, probably. Yeah. What? Throwing is a lot different than pressing. You know? I used to do curls with three fifteen. I had I, I, I had you, strong ligaments. Carl, you sure there wasn't more than two hundred pound dumbbells at that gym? I'm gonna. I, when I, I'm gonna. Text, I'm gonna text my uh, one one of my good friends who's still a member there. 
those dumbbells are still there. Probably. Still. I have oh, a, you I know what's moving those things out of there. Yeah, we're going to move it. I have I'm a full stop. set of Avancos. They go up to 200. Those are the biggest ones. But I'm going to tell you. They were custom made, Larry, though. They were custom made. Yeah. I, I don't remember. I touched them a million times. I, I don't remember what they I were. Swear I swear were, they, there were 200. They what? had his, have his name around the edge of the plate. Yeah. Uh -huh. The best part was the mirrors, though. You could watch yourself do freaking flies like yeah. that. Yeah, that was that was smart. That was he was the first person I ever saw to do that. I don't know if he copied anyone, but it was. Uh, I've never seen any other gym have that with the mirrors where you could actually do flies and you're laying down. Yeah, and you, you see, see yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, like the whole old short short stay hotels. <laughs> where you put Georgie, where you put the quarter in the bed and it vibrates. Yeah, yes. <laughs> That's seventies, that right there. You guys are dating, right? <laughs> yeah. he's, who he's is, who remembers place. that? You put quarters in the bed and it vibrates. <laughs> it's so loud, though. You know, you, 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 oh, you, know. it's embarrassing. Almost, it's so loud. <laughs> Dude, remember the remember the seventies? They'd have like we have color TV and air conditioning. Remember that shit? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Cable. Remember when they had cable? They said cable. That's still a selling point, I think. <laughs> HBO. HBO. Now they have Wi-Fi. Probably that's probably their selling point now. Wi-Fi. Yeah, right? yeah, Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's. I want to go to uh, George Myrano because George, George was living down in Florida. You'll tell the story, George, about how you met Mike Quinn and and uh, the training with him and then. Give us a little background on on what your relationship was with Mike Quinn, the late Mike Quinn, who we just lost this past week. Yeah, so, um, well, I kind of have to give you a little background. I was training with uh, Richie Gasparri in uh, 90, for the 91 Olympia, I believe it was in the Dolphin Hotel in Orlando. And, and it's just to give you a timeline, it was right after that that I had moved to Florida. Um and right around the beginning of 92, well, August of 92, the hurricane hit. And right before that is when I actually met Mike and when he was starting to set up the, the Boca Golds gym. So I'd helped him, you know, we, we met, we trained in some other golds and, uh, you know, we were training together for a little bit. And at that point, yeah, it was, it was somewhere around late 92, I think. Um, and, and Mike was, uh, he was, he was a character. But I don't think everybody knew Mike from what Mike really was or who he really was. He had this persona, but I think the persona was uh, he played off this persona because uh, he had a lot of issues. He had a lot of issues. Um, but when Mike was on, he, he was he was on. He, he was a great guy. He really was. Uh, you know, it, it just I don't think anybody really got a chance to see that. Uh, you know, helping him, you know, get that gym up and running in Boca. Um, he had great ideas. He, you know, the, the problem is, is that he was so up and down all the time that uh, he never really was consistent about anything. So, you know, that was, uh, that was Mike's downfall ultimately. So, but yeah, that's when I met Mike. It was around, it was around that 92, uh, right after the, the W, he signed with the WBF and that kind of fell through. That's when he started the gym. And didn't uh, didn't he prepare, prep you for a show in Jersey? He did. So <laughs> that's, that's a unique story. That story. Too. So uh, I believe that was early '94. Uh, yes, I, I think it was '94. It was either the East Coast or the Jersey. Um, and I remember this. And Carlo, you probably remember this. I, I can't imagine you wouldn't. Right? <laughs> but at the end of the day, this was this was a funny story. Um, this was a show that we were, we were going in, and I believe it was the 94 nationals and the 94 national before the 94 nationals, I had to qualify. Um, and I was going to, and I believe it was the East coast. I'm, I'm not positive, but Mike had, had prepped me for that show. Uh, and in the show I was, I was going to be a lightweight for the, the nationals, but I was real close and I don't believe I made weight that day. And it was like, man, I was off by a quarter of a pound, half pound, I don't know. And the judge is there, and I can't remember which judge it was, but John Kemper was obviously the, the head judge. And, uh, it, you know, couldn't, couldn't get me into – so I, I actually competed as a middleweight. However, Jason Arntz – You mean a light heavyweight, right? Didn't it, was, it was either a middleweight or, or a light heavyweight. I think I just missed the, you know, the, the cutoff of whichever class it was. Um, right. And Jason Arntz was uh, obviously in that show also. 
Um, and, and quite honestly, Mike was there with me and he said, don't worry about it. We're going to, we're going to beat this guy. We're going to win. Well, don't worry what your weight is. <laughs> you know, that was Mike. Right. And with those crazy deranged eyes, he would look at you and, you know, but, but at the end of the day, I wind up losing, you know, obviously to, to Jason. Um, and Mike went ballistic on John Kemper. I mean, the whole crowd went nuts. He started yelling and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> he chased John Kemper out the back door of the of the uh, the school that time and chased him through the parking lot, screaming, you motherfucker, all this. I mean, it was I it was comical. I mean, now you think about it, it was comical, but he was nuts. Mike was nuts in that way. And I don't know if you remember, Carlo. That, yeah, I think at that point you were around competing around this. Yeah, time. that was yeah, that was right when I got started. So I remember you know, scared like of Quinn. I'm sorry. Was Kemper scared of Quinn? Oh, absolutely. No, Mike, Mike, so here's the thing. What happened was. So Kemper didn't want any confrontation. He was just, Kemper was a very mild mannered guy. He he was so quiet and reserved, you know. He him and Bob. Him. him and Bob. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, they didn't like each other either? Oh, well, they, hey. they clapped heads a lot because, um, well, you know, John was the chosen guy in Jersey, right? Right. John was Jim's guy and uh, Jim nominated him and, you know, Bob was pretty getting pretty powerful. And there was always like a Jim rivalry, the strong and shapely versus diamond Jim guys. Right. And I was, a I was a strong and shapely guy and I represented them well <laughs> against them, but I was one of the only guys that would win shows sometimes at a strong and shapely because diamond Jim, if you remember, I you know you remember George, you walked in there. It was like being in jail. Yeah. And I'm not trying to, I, I know that can sound really wrong. So I apologize if I'm offending anybody, but I got to tell you, like, I remember I would drive down cause I, I trained at both. I mean, I was strong and shapely was my home, but I would drive down to diamond gym sometimes because I love the ambiance down there. Like I mean, Thunderdome in there. There were some, you, had a, had a, dudes in there. you walk in there's paneling on a wall. I, I walked in with a guy who was my training partner. He was a pretty tough guy. He's he like five foot two wrestler, you know, <laughs> it, but you know, the first time I walked in there with him, his name was Donnie. Hey, Donnie, listen. So let me tell you, you go in here. I said, if you pick a, a bench, keep the bench. And if somebody goes to take your bench, tell them it's your bench. I said, otherwise, they're going to take it from you. You know, it only took about 10 minutes because we were training different body parts for him to come to the leg room. And if you remember Diamond, you walked all the way in the back. Leg room was like yep. this little like what would be a bedroom apartment in any one of our houses, probably. Right. Yep. It was the leg room. So I'm doing legs. He comes in. He goes, I'm going to go wait in a car. I can't do this. This is crazy. He goes, you're right. The guy stole my bench. I'm like, well, why did you tell the guy it's your bench? You know? Um, Carlo, you were there. I mean, I remember I remember being, because I did train in both. I was with Bob as Strong and Shapely for a while. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, with, with John, um, you, you know, and, and Diamond. And that was around the time that, uh, and I'm going to date myself again, but, you know, I remember Johnny Morant being there. Yeah. Uh, you know, train and having nosebleeds out on the front, you know, on the front. <laughs> <too>. you, you, <laughs> I mean, and then, and then he would say, I know he had a trainer. I forget what the trainer's name was. Glenn Birkenkamp. And, yes. um, and, and actually Johnny be like two weeks out from a show and, and he'd have like a, a McDonald's tea burger in one, you know, pocket and a, and a grape sippy juice in the other pocket. <laughs> and he'd be going, yeah, Glenn. He goes, you know, I'm going to try that chicken and rice thing this week. And I'm like, looking at him and he's shredded and huge. I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's like the Jimmy the Bull, we go eat living on hot dogs and, and, and hamburgers when he was, you know, <laughs> well, you remember when we held the bros versus pros at Diamond Gym? There would be guys that showed up that never competed a day in their life. They, they were enormous. I remember I'm Big Shep, Allie Alston, may rest in peace. You know, he won the the, the bros versus pros. He <laughs> yep. was, and there was I another guy, a Coleman, who was a cop there, the, 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 like a CO. These guys were just. They, they just trained it. They were just big, freaky guys. They didn't even. That was a even, fucking Thunderdome, man. That was an yeah. famous word. It was in the and Maple it was small. It's in Maple, New Jersey. You walk into the gym, and there's no windows on the first floor except for the door, right? So the door, it's just you see the light in the door. So I would walk in there about five in the morning, and it's still dark out, and all you see is the light. You don't hear anything, not a peep in the streets. You open the door. And the music almost knocks you backwards, mm. right? <laughs> and then you go in there and everybody's like this, like scowling at you. 
like, especially like here I am, I'm this little white guy, like here comes a guy from Northern Jersey. And I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'm here to train. I had a little bit of an attitude too. But the good thing is, is that when you go in there, you just fit right in and you blend. And when you blend, man, I gained like 25 pounds of muscle my my, my first year in that gym in nine months, just training wow. like an athlete. It was crazy. But, it's but great- to, your, to your point, that was the East Coast. And that was in 94 because um, mm. I remember the story. John used to leave early anyway. As soon as it was judged, like as soon as the judge, judging was over, John would, would go. He'd be the first one out the door if it wasn't his show. And his shows were the Jersey and the Suburban. The rest he was a head judge at because he was right. the district chairman, right? So he would be the head judge at 90% of the shows unless, uh, I guess at the time it may have been Maz or it may have been this guy, John, whose last name escapes me, was also a head judge or Pierre, mm-hmm. a couple of uh, John's guys. But um, but yeah, it, the, the story it was funny because we didn't, I didn't get to see it because I was still in the building. But I know that, that he, he followed him through the parking lot and he came in all pissed off. Um, right when he got back in and John was gone, John was very non-confrontational. He didn't, he didn't want that. And I will tell you this though. I'm actually surprised, um, you know, because John is not always favorable. And that was, he kind of got a rap for that. And Bob was actually angry with him because Bob felt like he should have Bob, John Kemper. A lot of people don't notice John Kemper cost Robbie Lopez, his pro card. Yeah. Right. Because All right. He, I remember he that. Well. panel. When he lost the tiebreaker to um, oh uh, Johnny Johnny Jackson, right, right. A, lot, a lot of people don't know that. And Bob was pissed because he was like, he goes, he's a Jersey guy. How do you not favor vote for him? He gave him a second to Johnny Jackson, and it was a dead tie, and they had to break the tie, and he lost on the tiebreaker, or, or something like that. Is that but, because Robbie trained at uh, Bob's gym. You know, but Robbie's always been neutral, kind of like you know, I, I right. was I was. I was more well. I don't know if I was more Bob's guy than than um, than Robbie was, but Robbie was always good to everybody. He traveled yeah. the gym. And he went around. I don't. I don't foresee that being a problem. No. Well, Bob was also very open and honest. And it's if you if you were off, he'd say, "Well, you 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 weren't on today." Like he would tell you, "Dude, you're you're off. You, you shouldn't have won that show." So I think that you know if like you know obviously he has a little favoritism probably towards Robbie, but. Robbie, Robbie, I thought Robbie's lines were better than 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 Jackson, but it, whatever. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Bob was very straight on, like you know, Bob would tell you, ah, you couldn't, you know, you're soft today or whatever. You know what I mean? It's still for him. He was John was he, very weird, right? So like I'm at the USA's in 2002, and I had just like I had tied at the junior nationals and wound up in second on a tiebreaker like a month earlier, right? Because the juniors is in June and then the USA's in July typically. And here I am, I was 164 pounds. There was no welterweight class at the time. So I have to either shrink down to lightweight or go middleweight. And at that time, there was, you know, the uh, the middleweight class that year, 2002 USA, was David Henry, um, Jose Raymond, Tito Raymond, Garrett Allen, um, <laughs> the other Asian guy who wound up being pro, you know, so there's like, and I know this, right? Because I read the magazines and I follow up. I'm in this game. So I'm like, I'm not starting off in sixth place by going middleweight. This is ridiculous, you know? So I get on a scale and John Kemper is there. And he says, uh, he goes, you look great. I said, thanks. I have a problem though. And he goes, what's the problem? I said, I'm almost 164. I got to get down to lightweight. And he goes, well, we'll just go middleweight. And I go, no, nah. I said, I don't know if I want to do that, you know? And he goes, well, why not? I said, because, you know, Jose Raymond, all those guys goes, well, go middleweight anyway. And I said, well, okay. And he just walks away from me (laughs) and doesn't like, you know, doesn't offer any coaching, doesn't offer any more advice, doesn't, you know, just walked away. And I'm like, this is my district chairman here. Like he just walks away and and doesn't, you know, whatever, you know, I I wound up going down lightweight, but um, I wound up making it kind of, but, you know, he, he didn't, he he wasn't hands-on. He didn't really. Um, just, you know, just cause you were from Jersey, he wasn't always favorable. So I'm a little surprised, George is my only point here. And I'm sorry to be so long winded. Um, my, my, my only point is I'm surprised because he didn't typically favor that, but Jason Arntz was his boy from, from, from well, 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 let me, let me finish. Well, let me finish. Right. Right. Yeah. So no, no, I appreciate that because you're absolutely right, Carlo. So let me finish that. I mean, 
I'm telling you this is the perspective of Mike Quinn, right? This is not the perspective of George. Mike. Let's, let's make sure we got that straight now. All right. So, so here's the thing. No, at the end of the day, listen, I, I was clear. I, Jason beat me. There was no doubt about it. Right. So, I mean, you know, he was, he was in better shape, you know, um, he had better shape. So at, at the end of the day, I wasn't that kind of pissed off about it. Now, obviously, um, you know, John Kemper, you, you know, Jason was dating John Kemper's daughter at the time. And there was a whole lot of, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, issues going on, you know, things going on there too. So, but no, I do remember John being typically, you know, you know, pretty neutral because um, again, in, in those six, you know, he kind of helped me uh, at, at the nationals when I actually took third as a middleweight and he was real helpful. He, you know, he, he helped me. I trained in, in, uh, in diamond for that whole, that whole show. Um, you know, the whole prep for that show. And typically, like you're saying, Carlo, I was a, uh, I was a, a Bob guy too. So much a Bob guy that he actually convinced me to do the PDI, but we won't, uh, we won't go into that. Uh, oh, shoot. Yeah. Right. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Resistant. So, go. yeah. So which was the biggest mistake of my life because Steve Weinberger was sitting right there in the front row and that was <laughs> the end of my amateur career in the NBC. <laughs> that was it. But, um, you know, and then of course I had to apologize and all that other stuff, but, but as time went on, I guess that was the way. So, but yeah, no, I agree with you, Carla. He was, he was, John was a nice guy. He was a quiet guy. He didn't say much. Um, you know, it was Mike that actually took his own perspective on this thing and right away went after John and it's John's fault. You should have won this, you know, and, but you know, Mike Quinn, you know, style. So, um, but yeah, but I, well, I hope you don't mind. I'll take you there if it's okay. Uh, George and, and Dave, um, I was the one that shared with Dave. I think Dave, you probably told George that Bob shared the story with me about when your, your dad, uh, you know, and again, I, I'm not saying this in breath. Yeah, let, but, um, let him tell that story, you know, Carlo. George, okay, go ahead. tell the story because everyone heard that that Mike had gotten knocked out in the gym by some guy. Yeah, and <laughs> no one really knew the whole story of what happened or you know what went on. And it turned out Carlo had told me that it was your dad. And I, obviously, you and I have been friends. But I never knew your dad knocked out Mike Quinn. So I called you up and I said, "Is that true?" And you told <laughs> me the story. So you might as well tell everyone else the story. All right. Me. So so here's, way, so here's. <laughs> by the way, before you get. Just a full disclaimer. When Bob told me, he asked me to never tell anybody because he didn't want to. <laughs> Bob told me. I, I didn't even know George. And uh, but Bob yeah. told me. I remember seeing George. I think we were at a diner or something, George, right? But, I think you were sitting across. Bob's like, hey, his father knocked out Mike. But go ahead. Yeah. yeah. But since they're both seen, God rest Bob both of their souls, I figure it's yeah. okay to share that now. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> So long story short, I mean, I'll try to make it as short as possible, but it's an oldie but goodie. Um, we were in the gym and, and well, first of all, let me let me back up a second. My, my father is an old school Italian guy, right? Um, my namesake, you know, there's no surprises there. Carlo, we come from a background that who knows what you're connected to. But at the end of the day, um, he's, he's, an old, he's an old school Italian guy. And, and if I had to be afraid of anybody my whole life, there's one guy I'm afraid of and it's him. So, and to this day, he's 80 years old and, and I'm, I'm, he, open, he raises his voice, I cringe, you know, so, and he can't even walk. But I mean, he raises his voice, I cringe. Long, so, so anyway, Mike, when, when we had the gym, um, Mike was always into something, right? He was always coming up with good ideas. And like I said, when Mike was on, he was on, but, um, but he always had these financial issues, right? He was always looking for money. He was, uh, nobody knew where my, Mike's money ever went because he made money, but even Mike didn't know where his money went. So, you, you know, he was, and, and I, you know, I'm going to disclose all this, but we won't have to use you know, too much uh, detail, but obviously this was about money and drugs in, in essence. <clears throat> Mike, Mike had this opportunity that, you know, he had this, you know, bonehead idea that he was going to purchase all these, you know, uh, you know, growth hormone and stuff like that. And he, but he had no money to do it. Right. So obviously he came to my father and he asked my father for the money. Um, and, and, uh, you know, uh, it was, you know, and at that time, you know, well, today it's not a lot of money, but at that time it was, it was a significant amount of money. Um, and, and like I said, with Mike, it, it, nothing ever went right, right? Because he was never consistent with anything. So the money kind of disappeared. The, the drugs or whatever he did with it disappeared. And, and this one day in the gym, you have to understand, and I'll step back a second. The, the gym, when you walked into Boca Golds, 
you would walk in and there was this um, semicircle front desk, right? Straight ahead. And then off to the left, they had this uh, little juice bar or cafe with these little stools around it. So if you picture, you walk in, you, you, you know, talk to the person at the front desk. And if you look to the left, there's this juice bar. Anyway, long story short, my father calls Mike and says something to, you know, whatever on the phone. And, and Mike loses his mind on the phone. He says, get down to the gym right now. I'm going to fuck you up and blah, 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 blah. Okay. So my father says, okay, we're going down to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going down to the gym. I said, what the fuck is the matter with him? He says, I don't listen. He's, he's a mess. He, so we went down. Mike walks in. He's standing behind the, the, you know, the front desk. And he's just mouthing. He's going on and on and on about whatever. He just, you know, Mike, he just kept talking, running his mouth you know, put my father down, whatever the case was, right? Now, my father's sitting at the, the juice bar listening to all this, and he's eating a sandwich, you know, because he had a, you know, they had little sandwiches and stuff there. So he's eating a sandwich. And now they're bickering back and forth. All of a sudden, Mike starts, like, just loses his mind with those de deranged eyes. You know, I don't know if you guys recall Mike's <laughs> eyes. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, and he starts charging my father. Now my father told me this, he goes, Georgie, I'm thinking, you know, I can't, this. now Mike was about 250 at this point. My father's a buck 80, five foot six, all Italian guy, right? Sitting on a yeah. stool. He goes, I can't let this guy fucking hit me. He's gonna fucking kill me. <laughs> he says, I let this guy get a hold of me. It's all over, right? So he goes, I'm thinking, he says, as he's coming at me, my father takes a Superman leap off the <laughs> off that stool and hits him, bada bing, right on the button. Un unbelievable! It was a shot heard around the world, right? But it was, but <laughs> <laughs> went the fuck down. Now that's not the funny part. The funny part is that Mike had this partner called his name was Steve Wynn, right? Is that a guy from England? And me and Steve are there watching this whole thing, right? So my father wasn't good enough to fucking hit him once and knock him out. He gets in. You remember Mike had that ponytail, right? Right. So my father gets on his back and he goes to grab him by the ponytail. He's going to fucking cock it out his head into the tile. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so me and Steve grab him, pull him off. Mike's out cold. It must have been 10, 15 seconds, if I can remember. Out. He's out on the ground. It's over, right? So we calm my father down. This is Mike Quinn. Mike gets up. Right, starts mad like like nothing happened, like nothing fucking happened. He starts mouthing <laughs> off, "You're fucked up. I'm gonna call the fucking police. I'm gonna put you in jail." Beep, ba, boom. He's going nuts again, right? <laughs> and the funniest part about this whole story, okay, if you guys know Mike Quinn and how he was up and down, all of a sudden he's going on for five minutes after he takes a fucking shot, right? <laughs> so now he's. <laughs> He sits, he gets behind the, he gets behind the, the front desk again. And all of a sudden he shuts up and he starts feeling his jaw. And you know what he says? He goes, oh, George. <laughs> My father's name is George too. He goes, George, that's a, that, you got a good fucking shot. That's a good shot. It's a, and like all of a sudden does a 180, right? And there's like nothing wrong anymore. And it's, he's, oh yeah, that was a good shot. I, you know, like, wow, you got a good he forgot he got knocked out. I think that's what <laughs> and it was over. And that was the end of it. Obviously, they weren't best friends anymore. But but that was the that was the story and the gist of it. So and, and by the way, uh, I, I, we did get the, he did get the money back, but it wasn't from Mike. So. <laughs> <laughs> did he forget yeah. he got knocked out like Dave said? I mean, he just popped back yeah, he up. Was out cold. <laughs> yeah, he just he got yeah, he was out cold. But like I said, I don't want to exaggerate, maybe 10, 15 seconds, but out. A long enough time for my mother to get on his back and grab his pony yeah, right. like hey, is that a <laughs> so what you're saying is he didn't realize he was knocked out. No, he had no idea. No, he, <laughs> he, he woke up, he didn't, he didn't even realize he was out. Right. And then he just, he, that like yeah. nothing happened. He kept yelling and oh, screaming wow. again. So, <laughs> but that was Mike, you know, that, that was Mike. It was just, May he rest in peace, man. No, I mean, I mean yeah. listen, I, I did, from my point of view of Mike, what he did for me and who he was, people really didn't know who Mike was. Right. I mean, Mike, Mike had, listen, uh, you know, back then, we didn't look at mental health issues the way we look at them now, right? I mean, back then, you, you know, oh, that guy, he's got, you know, AFU, he's all fucked up, right? You know, really, he, he did have some issues. And and the reason what held Mike back is those issues because he would, you know, he would, when Mike was on, he was on, like I said, but then he would self-medicate, um, you know, and when and he, 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 
I would put him up against the best of them training. He was an animal in the gym. I mean, I've trained with Richie. That's the, you know, that's when I met Tommy Prince. Tommy Prince trained in Boca Goals with me, um, you know, in, in, in that gym, right? And the thing is, is I trained with Tommy because, you know, one week, you know, might be training and the next week, you know, you'd be gone. You wouldn't see him anymore. Or you'd be, you know, he'd come in eating coffee and donuts and saying, I'm not training today. So, but, but Mike was, was that guy. And, but he was just, he needed, he needed help. He, he, he definitely needed help. And I think that he never really got that help that he needed because he was a good guy. He, you know, when you sat with him and you knew him, um, he wasn't that persona that you see that bad boy guy. That wasn't really Mike. You know, he, he he was he was a deep thinker. It was an act. It was an act, basically. That, yeah. that giant scar around his eye didn't help either. You know, with the deranged eyes, that big scar on his face, you, you look crazy. George, how did that happen? You know that well, story. Well, there's yeah, how did that happen? <laughs> that's another story. Um, so that's a separate story. So, um, and and we can we can kind of well, frame your that father who gave it to him, right? Oh, that was. <laughs> What's that? The scar? The well, scar. your father didn't do that, did he? No, 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 no. That's <laughs> that's another Italian crew, did it? But um, so there was a new. I can't remember the name of the club. Anyway, Mike was always trying to be involved with the good old boys, right? So they had an interest in the gym. But anyway, Mike was mouth off all the time. So he happened to be in this new club that these guys had an interest in, and I, you know, it doesn't matter what the names are and all that. But, but at George, the end before of the day, tell, up, George, before yeah. you tell the story, I have a question. Do you think that Mike had like, you know how like some people just have like this, it's not conscious, but it's like an unconscious desire to get the shit beat out of them. Like they, like they were almost looking to be punished because they just are on, no, so unhappy. He was bipolar. He was bipolar. Yeah. It, yeah. I know he was. He wants to talk about you know how like some people do destructive things. on me. He wanted to call when I was selling drugs. He was like, "You tell Greg, I'm going to call the DEA on him." Mm-hmm. About what? You well, know what I mean? He's bipolar. That's what George is trying to tell you. One minute he gets knocked out by his father cursing him out. The next minute he's like, "Holy shit, that was a good shot." You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, he's bipolar. So I don't think he yeah, wants to get What I'm asking. saying, Greg, is some people are so unhappy in, internally that I know they're almost looking it's like they have a death wish it's like they have a, a desire to get this crap beat out of them and they push buttons where they know that they shouldn't be because they yeah. want to test the waters they want to almost prompt so, someone to, to try to start yeah. a fight with them even though but they the know guy, they might get hurt you know it's so like the guys who want they, the cops to kill them well he was gonna call so, so here's the thing dave and this is what i learned in in in, in medicine <laughs> is <laughs> you you can't rationalize the irrational right Mm -hmm. Uh, it's very difficult for you to to rationalize his behavior because you don't really know how he was thinking um it's very possible that they do have self-destructive behavior based on where their mental state is at the time right so um but that was mike he he would be when he was on it he was on it right but when he was low he was self-medicating who knows what thoughts were going through his head and and obviously those thoughts may or may not have been self-destructive. I, you know, um, he's obviously you, you know. And then of course this persona was something to um, protect him, like you're saying. You know, I need to be the bad guy. I need, you know, I'm protecting myself. That might have been the the uh, the psychology behind it, right? Of right. Um, I don't want nobody to hurt me, even though I'm hurting inside. I don't want nobody to hurt me. You know, or like you're saying, maybe he. I'm the only one that can hurt me. Um, no, no, because I know people, and maybe you guys can know people like this, where they actually will put themselves in dangerous situations because secretly they they want to get hurt. Like, and and you know what? They'll they'll uh, put themselves in the riskiest situations. They're like, well, you know what? If I come out ahead, then I look like a hero. If I get the crap beat out of me, I don't care because really, you know what? I feel like a piece of shit anyway. I deserve to get the crap beat I out think, of me. I think what George is saying is right. I think he has highs and lows. I think he really thought, I'm going to kick this guy's ass, George. But next thing you know, it's bipolar. Right. It's bipolar. So those manic states that you don't make rational decisions, right? right? right. So, you know, and that's that was Mike. And that's why his life was so up and down all the time. I mean, he had everything going for him. Here, here, let me give you a perfect example. Signs with the WBF um, contract that's, you know, comparable to Gary Stridham's, right? Well, now we knew Gary really? Stridham was going to win, okay? But sign because Mike was a showboat, right? He was the show. How much? And all he had to do was How come in. 
Yeah. You know, all they had to do was come in in shape. That's all he had to do. No, not Mike. He meets this Di Pasquale guy, right? Remember Di Pasquale? With yeah, the yeah, Moro. Moro. He, starts, he starts training, eating f- fucking donuts and bonbons, and he goes on stage like a fat ass. And yeah, then, he and then fat. he wonders why he don't get any money or a contract. So this is, you know, this was like the the poor decision making of Mike. The same thing with the gym. The gym he had the, in Boca was the only, I mean, the only gym in Boca or foot. It was one of the best gyms there. He had ever, he had a, a membership that was, I mean, we filled the place. And the place was probably at least at that time, I think, 12, 10, 12,000 square foot. I mean, wow. shit, we had Andrew Dice Clay <laughs> training there every day. Wow. So, you know, it was those kind of people coming in. And the thing is, is that. All he had to do, he put his name on it. He had a piece of it. These guys, you know, put up the other money, of course, but they kicked him out because he couldn't, he couldn't run it. He couldn't manage it. He was messing up. The money was missing. There was always something with Mike. And and that was, you know, again, it, it was, it was because of his behavior, but he didn't know how to fix it or he wouldn't listen to fix it. Or at that time there was no fix because like I said, you know, it was taboo. Nobody talked about it. Mental health issues. Oh my God, I'm weak. I'm, you know, I'm no good. I'm a bad man. I'm, you know, all this other stuff. Right. So, um, so he would self-medicate and, and I think this is a part of his demise because he self-medicated most of his life, Sure. And, you know, so that, that, that was something that, and again, I don't know the, the ins and outs of the details of his, of his death or his illness, but, um, I'm so when sure he was that. in that bar with those wise guys, you know, what, what, how did he get his, his his face cut open? So so basically, Mike was doing the same thing that he was doing with my father, right? Mike had this, you know, bad habit of open his mouth, mouthing off, you know, and and these guys don't like notoriety, right? Um, <laughs> it, <laughs> that. You know, they want to stay in That's the shadows a little true. bit. So so the thing is, is that he was saying the wrong things. Um, these guys on uh, the club, they had it. So at, at the end of the day, they went up to him, right? And they basically said, shut your mouth. Or, you know, we're, we're going to shut it for you. And of course, Mike hears that. What does he do? He don't do the right thing. He does the opposite. He keeps talking. Yeah. And eventually they, they, they threw him a beating. And that, that's what happened. And I know everybody said it was a bottle and everything. <laughs> it, it wasn't a bottle that cut his face. So obviously, um, this particular gentleman that he was, he had his button. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows what that means, but um, it doesn't really matter. But he wore a ring. He wore, sorry, <laughs> what was that? Explain what that means for people who don't know. He, he was a made guy. He was a okay. made guy. So, okay. so and, and at the end of the day, um, he had a lot of influence. Uh, and uh, he wore rings, and uh, those rings are what cut Mike's face. Oh, uh, okay, I see. So yeah, but Mike him. used to say he was sucker punched by that guy. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, oh, he I, "Well, listen, Greg, Greg, at that so so in this particular instance, I wasn't there. Right. I wasn't actually physically there watching what went down. I right. just." Heard about the aftermath. No, I agree with you. I'm just saying, you know how Mikey, he made an excuse. He said he was sucker punched. That's what he was telling Bob and I and all the stuff. That yeah, he probably was, was multiple people beating him up, I'm sure, at the same time. So maybe he was. What? One, I know. I'm pretty sure I knew the one. The one guy was he's, he's a pretty made guy. He was a pretty, and he was he also had the reputation of taking no shit. The club yeah. owner. He had a reputation, right, George? He, was, he had a reputation. He took no shit. He was a no shit kind of guy. But, you know, when you're. Like when George says you got that button, bro, you can you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Well, yeah. I, at the end of the day, all Mike had to do was shut the fuck up. Right. <laughs> I'm sure they liked him having him in the club because he's a tough guy. They just don't want to be told what to do by him. That's what. Yeah, well, well, listen, I don't have a problem with author- I don't have a problem with authority either, but I don't like nobody telling me what to fucking do. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what the funny thing is is that I, what I never understood is Mike with the partying and all the drugs. I mean, because he never got over his sister dying from drugs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. True. And it's, you know, and I always felt bad for him because of that, because, uh, you know, I, my sister passed away. But what I'm saying is that, you know, he was very, 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 uh, you know, upset about his sister, but that really killed him. And yet he kind of followed the same kind of path, you know, it just. So, so there's a, gen- so there is a genetic component to mental health. We, we know this now, right? right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and again, to addiction and things like that. So. And I, and I, you know, again, you know, this is from purely medicine. This is not, you know, not inferring anything from his parents or anything like that. 
all I'm saying is that you see these patterns in, in, in some families, right? So, um, yeah, it did, it did break him up a lot. And, and the thing is, is that, but he also had his own issues that he was dealing with. Yeah. And the thing is, is that, you know, at that point they were similar to, to his sister and they, they handled them in a similar way. Right. Yeah. Par they were on like a parallel journey. I just don't understand that. It, it, see, because us rash, somebody who's rational, like I'm ra like, you know, I wouldn't, I, that would have like, you know, sold the deal for me. And I would have been like, you know what? I'm done. I'm, you know, in her. Right, I'll, say, I'll say this one more time. You can't rationalize. No, I know. <laughs> you know what? Let's, let's take a modern day comparison. Hold on, Greg. Let's take a modern day comparison. Look what happened with the guy in Australia there. I was just about to say that, man. Right? Colin. Colin? Colin, yeah. Colin Van yeah, Mogen. I'm not Van saying he's, I don't know. If he's I was, I was thinking the same thing, Dave. The guy was on top of the world, and, yeah. he, and he made some very poor decisions and took drugs and, and, and was self-medicating. And, you know, it so drugs, he, could have, he could have died very easily. I mean, he, he went, through a, went out of a second-story window, you know? Yeah, he, needed, he was on drugs and never needed someone to talk to because to, you go on drugs, it, it sends you down, sends you up. You know, even just being normal, he might have been like that. But if he had, you know, George is his friend. If he would have just not done that stuff, he probably would, you know, would, would have been a lot better. I mean, a lot just of had to deal with people. A lot of successful people are dealing with a lot of demons, you know, of mental illness de demons, and they self medicate with drugs or alcohol, and that's never a good. That never winds up good. <laughs> it just doesn't turn out well. I mean, we've we, seen we know God. lots of them, Dave. Yeah, we know lots say, of them, and, and yeah. most of them are dead. Yeah. Listen, this, this is not something that's rare in this sport. It's not rare in this sport. This no. is this is unfortunately something that occurs often. George, yeah. first of all, in order to be in this sport, you need to screw loose. To well, begin with. And that, that's, <laughs> for sure. that's for damn sure. You got to start out a little. You got to start off. Being no, right. John's you know? totally right. You're paying money for someone to see you in that little, you know, the posing trunks and to stand up there with the fake paint. The whole thing is kind of like cultish, if you ask me. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I've done this since. Didn't you expect us to be yeah. sitting around a campfire drinking peyote while this is going right? on? Right. I mean, it, you know? it, is, it, is, it, is, it is the gayest, not gay sport that is some of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here I am. I'm going to do it again, right? Because yeah. I, 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 I think you're insane. I can't believe you're still going to compete again, George. How, how are you doing this? You, gotta show uh, you know, listen, you know why I'm doing it? Because why? I can. Because, because you can. I can. Yeah, that's and, and you know, the thing is, is that I love it. It's not because Aren't I you in school. Or, I What's thought you were in school right now. Aren't you in I school? I did. So, so uh, well, I didn't want to make this about me, but <laughs> okay. um, uh, yeah. So, so I've um, I finished schooling. Right, my background now is medicinal biochemistry, clinical pharmacology. I've right. done medical. I've done the nursing, and I realized, um, you know, from schooling that number one, Dave. Let's say this, okay? Um, you know, from an education standpoint. Medical school is 25 years antiquated. We're learning the same thing now as you yep. did when you went to medical school, okay? I'm and the sure. problem is, is that medicine is advanced and it's advancing so quickly, but we're not training these doctors correctly. And, and the thing is, is why I went this path is because I realized that I'm not going to change the world one patient at a time, right? So, so what I realized is I want to be the guy that's actually training the doctors and that, and that's what I do now. So, so not only do I have the knowledge of actually the medicinal side of it, but actually the clinical application of that to, um, you know, apply those to differential diagnoses. So that's, that's what awesome. I do. Finally. Um, what, yeah. Finally. So, <laughs> Finally. Maybe you could, yeah, maybe really you could hire a George as an expert witness for you. Uh, uh, I mean, Oh, I'm good. <laughs> no, but, no, I will, but yeah, I'm I'm good, man. I'm innocent. So I'm, I'm, good. I'm breaking balls. I'm breaking balls. <laughs> you, George, though, I think that's that's pretty good because he he went, you know, for education. Well, most of us guys just, you know, you know, think like an A certified thing or something like that. You know what I mean? Like he went it, back to school late. That's I know, hard that's to what do. I'm saying I'm I'm impressed, George. Yeah. I'm impressed. God I mean, bless, Dave, man. Dave, you pretty much didn't didn't do that because of the way things were. You went, you went the route you did, and now it yeah. seems like if you you could do what he did, even. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I have no, I have no desire. No. I, you know, right. just being in the hospital and seeing the the way the uh, the nutritionist prescribed the uh, cardiac diet, I, I I'd be thrown out in two seconds. I can't, I wouldn't be able to keep my mouth shut. They'd yeah, but dude, you know so how hard it is. Like George said, it's disgusting. You yeah. know, you know how yeah. hard it is when you're older. He said he's fifty-two. 
bro, I'm sick. I'm I'm gonna be 63. Me, John, you know, yeah. we're all the same age. But the thing right. is, is that I couldn't, you couldn't get me to sit in fucking one class to learn about basket weaving. I, I don't have to tell <laughs> no, you're right. You're because you make your own schedule. It's very yeah, hard no, to but, go back. But it's you know, hard. when you're yeah. When you're younger, you're more susceptible. I mean, you go to college after high school or go, you know, that's a different animal. But when you're already, he's already, you know, 50, two years, you know, you, it's to say, you know, shit, I'm going to go back to school late in life and be able to even focus and even think about trying to learn. Uh, dude, I can't, you can't teach an old dog new tricks for me. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm stuck in my ways. I couldn't go to school for shit. I wouldn't be able to sit there and focus on anything. So Greg, let, let me let me no, absolutely. And I agree with you. Let me clarify why the, the education, right? Let me clarify why. Here's the thing. First of all, you know, school today is is all about the money, right? Mm -hmm. It's all it's all about the curriculum that we have, especially in this country, is all bullshit. Right. It, it's all about making money for the schools mm -hmm. and actually making the world go around, right? But you're not really learning anything. What they're what they're trying yeah. to teach you is the fundamentals of something and see that if you can learn it. And once you get out of school, then you actually learn real medicine, right? You know, how do I apply this? What right. what do I really have to do in medicine? Um, and then it's all continuing education, right? So that's 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 basic, right? So that's why we have doctors coming to me now, learning about okay, what do I do in my practice to actually, you know, get better patient outcomes, right? Because the shit I learned in medical school is absolutely nothing. I mean, listen, anatomy is anatomy. That's yeah. never going to change unless we got some fucking alien somewhere. I don't know, but but I mean, you know, anatomy is never going to, you know change right um but medicine is medicine's moving forward we have so, we have so many different uh, aspects of medicine now that they're not teaching because you know whether it's government or funding or money or just help, holding back because they don't want to give out this information that's the key and that's what you have to recognize and you know these kids are spending two two hundred and fifty three hundred thousand dollars on going to school getting out and and you can't wipe their ass with two hands because they haven't taught them any critical thinking skills. All they taught them is how to pass a test. And that, that's not how the real world works. Is <laughs> it moving hey. towards prevention? More towards prevention, like what you've been doing, weight training and dieting and all that stuff is starting to go into, into medicine. Because they don't know yes. anything about that. I mean, yes. prescribe a medication. You know, right. diabetes so like, medication, so like, cholesterol. School gives you a background yeah. of knowledge. Now, what you do with that knowledge is up to you. So. I decided after I got all the knowledge that I what I didn't enjoy the hospital experience and what what where I started going. So what I said to myself is I'm just going to take it and go someplace else with it, which I did in the bodybuilding world. Right. Honestly, yeah. you know, some people will take it to the end. They'll go to the doctor route. They'll do the residency. They'll do the internship. They'll do the you know the specialization, and they'll become a a heart surgeon or something like that, yeah. which is basically a plumber. You know, right. <laughs> or they'll do, or they'll do, you know, neurosurgery, which is basically an electrician, you know, right. or whatever they're going to do, you know, but you don't have to go in that direction. The problem is that if you stay in the system, you become systematized. You can't even think outside of the box because they won't let you. And they'll say, but, if you but, do think outside the box, you're going to be sued for, for malpractice. You know, you're gonna I, I you, every guy on this panel knows more about steroids, drugs, and chemicals like that than a lot of doctors. And My diet. Doctor, and they, diet. Yeah, my doctor used to say, like, what's the, the testosterone? And I'm like, it's not testosterone, it's just like <laughs> what did you go to Mr. G? Huh? <laughs> oh, <I say> <laughs> our managed our managed healthcare system is broke, guys. We know this, right? So managed healthcare, and listen, way back when this is actually a new concept. We used to do fee for service, right? But our managed health care is broke. We pay these premiums to doctors that now the only people that are making money are these insurance companies. The doctors don't make any money anymore because the insurance companies don't want to pay them. And ultimately, who suffers? The patient doesn't get the care that they're looking for anymore. So, so proactive fee-for-service medicine is where you're going to see things start to go. And, and Mr. G, um, you know, you made a point, right? So being proactive about your health. You know, understanding these, you know, pro aging and longevity and and how to actually sustain life and, and make uh, make yourself live longer, more healthier is the key. The, the, the key is not manage health care to where you already have a disease and then we're just going to maintain it with medications. Right. If the disease doesn't kill you, the drugs will. It, it's as simple right. as that. Right. So, right. you know, and that's where this whole system is broke. And obviously insurance is, you know. I mean, uh, what, once, what happens is now is that you're going to start to see insurance dwindle because a lot of doctors aren't taking it anymore. They don't get paid. 
you, you know, they get 13, a, a PCP gets the $13 a visit. And, and I'm not, now, now you know why they're, they're herding them like cattle, you know, quadruple booking them. And, and the people don't get the care that they're looking for. They get a, they get a, a pill to, to, you know, deal with the symptoms. Well, right. instead of a pill, you, they prescribe you. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm saying is you're the, you're the prescription. So you have, you have 200 patients a month that you may see for five minutes streets on a Zoom call. Instead of prescribing the medication, right. they're prescribed you and you give them a diet, the training exercise, and, and more importantly, the motivation that they need. So this way they don't have to take high blood pressure medication, diabetes medication, and the insurance company winds up actually saving money in the long run because it's cheaper to pay someone like you to have these patients than if someone really gets sick and has to go through surgery, and, and all this other stuff, that's where that's where I see where you're going to be. You're the new going to be the new breed. You're I agree with you 100. percent You know what? Dave's been doing this for years. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. You yes. know what our job? No, but this is here's the thing. That you know what our job is? Forget right. all that other stuff. We, Dave's been doing it for years. Our job at this point is to convey the message. Dude, convey the right. message. Make sure they understand it's not taboo anymore. Make sure they're not sticking their head in the friggin' sand like an ostrich, right? The, you know, you got to get checked. You got to get medical advice. You, but, but you know, you don't want to be going to these quasi doctors that, you know, oh, don't take testosterone. Oh, don't. Do, oh, here's a pill. No, you don't want that. George, right. these doctors don't want to even write a, a script for a cardiac CT scan. I know. The, I know. When it's the most don't get paid. revealing <laughs> diet. Yeah, it's because it's, the, the insurance won't cover it. Right. It's the most George, revealing George. diagnostic test you can do for your heart. It's crazy. Oh, by the way, Carlo just apologized because he had a bad connection, but he he verified the dumbbells at Bob Bonham's. I was right. Two hundred and fifty <laughs> pounds. I oh, two fifty. Okay. Two fifty dumbbells. I thought they were two forties, but they're two fifty. I thought they were two forty two sixty. I knew I they thought... were over two hundred pounds. I knew. Dude, right. I, I, I used knew. to try to fuck around, pick them up all the time. I I, I knew they weren't two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> George, speaking you of medicine. You just said they were 200 before. I did not. I said they would go. Let's rewind this show. I said, <laughs> I said uh, I didn't we got, I got a, John's got to go. John, I, I know you got to go. You got to. You got something. You got to go. No, no, so if you, gotta, you got, you, you gotta, guys can keep going. I just got to. Yeah, go. we're gonna, we're going to keep going because I want to get to Armand because right. people are worried yeah. that he's falling asleep. <laughs> and Dave, and Dave, just, so, Dave, just so you know, I do have to get back to the office too. So I just, oh, you I just have to have a showing us your biceps. I'm I'm enjoying this so much that I really want to be invited again. Uh, oh know, my God! He's got a lead priest thing going on. George, you left out the best part. We, what kind of medicine is making you look like that? That's what uh, I like. Well, hey, listen, that's that. He owns a compound on me. another show. I'm thinking I want to look good too when, I'm, when I get older, as I get older. Well, listen, and, right, and that's where medicine's going, right? So, yeah. so here's the thing a lot of our medicine is also 25 years antiquated, right? A, exactly. Everything is a mimetic. So it mimics, it mimics something in the body, inhibits something, and there's a cascading chain in the body. And if you cut that off at the pass in that cascading chain or you inhibit an enzyme or whatever the case might be, this is why drugs have side effects, right? Because what, do you, what happens down the path? Right? right. So, and this is why the, everybody said, well, it's not a drug if it don't have a side effect, which is true because of the way we, our medicine works. Right. However, and I know, you know, there's a lot of talk about peptides and stuff like that, but we will see a lot of mainstream peptides now, just like your GLP-1 agonists and GIPs and things like that, that are real peptides. And instead of mimicking, we're modulating the system, right? We're modulating a receptor. We're actually expressing genes. We're methylating genes, right? These are big. These are huge because we can turn function on and off based on peptide and, and the sequence of that peptide. Wow, so, cool. um, and this is key because this is where medicine in the next 10 years, this is where you're going to see all medicine going. The Dave, let's we'll have him see. back on and talk about this shit. I mean, well, this, let's, let's, really, like I said, it's another show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I said, we got to have him back, back on. Week. Yeah, because yeah, the, we'll the, the Nyquist stories are yeah. great, but this is where it's at. Right? Yeah, this yeah. is really yeah. where it's at. But guys, well, I got to go. Seriously. I'll see you all next week. See you, John. Bye. George is being modest. He's got a very big background in, in, in compounding pharmacies and all that stuff. So we'll, we'll get him back on. If you want to come on next week, if you're around, George, we'd love to hear you talk about some of the. the, the no, no, listen, I enjoyed stuff. you guys. I, 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 yeah. Listen, I, I make my own schedule. So, uh, you know, I just I just made right. my schedule for George, uh, an you're hour. Doing a, you're doing the Masters Nationals. Did it, Masters did it, Nationals is six right. weeks from Thursday. Yes. Six all weeks right. from Thursday. What weight class? 
I'll be a welter. I'll be a light welterweight. Let's just put it that way. What is that? What is that? Total. I'll probably be between 160 and 165. And how tall are you? 5'2 with my high heels. And it, that's not a good day. He's 5'2. <laughs> I, I mean, they were saying that you were the biggest, the thickest guy. And I, you know, I'm sitting trying to figure out and your height and your weight, dude. You're like a bull. Yeah, back in the day, he was a lot bigger than that. I, can imagine. Oh, I, saw, I, can him. Imagine. I saw him. He I mean, was big, man. He was a big he guy. He was over 200 pounds on stage. Bob before. used to talk very, very highly of you, George. Bob yeah, I look like SpongeBob SquarePants. That's why wow. I never won. <laughs> <laughs> but you were freaky. That's all that mattered. Yeah. Yeah. Lee Priest, he was definitely like Lee. He had that yeah. Lee Priest going on there. At least right. my- you know, it's positive to see somebody at, at your age look this good instead of people that are just unfortunately passing away so so much. And, and a lot of times it's PED abuse that's the cause of it. And now we can see that... Drugs can be used in, in the right way to make you live longer and look better, not just to You can't be yourself. ignorant. I mean, that's the problem, you know. You can't George, be ignorant. George, do you take blood pressure medicine like we were just talking about for the I don't. I actually did my checkup uh just two days ago. My blood pressure is one twenty six over seventy two after training. Well, nice. yeah, but, yeah, but what about when you're off season weight? Well, I mean the, my blood pressure does go up to maybe I, I think it's been one thirties. You know, 132 over 80 something, you know, that's been a good. So I don't really have, I've never, well, in my family, I don't have any, uh, you know, predisposition for high blood pressure. Um, what I do have is, uh, you know, some kidney stuff that, that I watch considerably, uh, you know, some, some cardiac stuff, but, but high blood pressure is in one of them. So, which is good, you know, but I make sure that I make sure I get checked all the time and, you know, and I, I don't do it. Well, I don't do foolish stuff, right. There's. I, I do you think I do, 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 do any kidney do. support supplements or anything? I, I do. I mean, you know, the, so my supplements that I take, uh, you know, everything that I do is is more towards um, lowering inflammation in the body, right? Okay. So anything that uh, you know, grapeseed extract and and all these different, you know, turmeric, all of this uh, is is key to lowering inflammation in the body and keeping everything uh, healthy. But like nat, quercetin, any of that kind of good yeah, we, stuff. Yeah, we do. Well, so here's the thing. Like, we get, we do NAD, you know, so NAD, we do IV NAD, NAD plus, right? So uh, all this stuff, you know, so Dave, I mean, Dave spoke about all of it, you know, and I listen to him constantly, but, but man, this could be, this could be another show and we can talk yeah, about, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about nutrition. We'll talk about longevity supplements. Yeah. How about that? We'll do yeah, that. Shit, I longevity, is, longevity is just like getting ready for a show, right? And awesome. Yeah. Longevity yeah. is about segments of pro aging and then longevity. You know, pro-aging and longevity. We actually age the fastest when we're the youngest, right? And in, in our early development, pu- puberty, right? And then, of yeah. course, everybody talks about this longevity and slow the aging process and everything. But it's pulsatile, just like everything else. You, you don't want to inhibit mTOR forever, right? And yeah. things like yeah. that. You, you want to actually, you know, because you're going to feel good when you're actually aging, right? Using growth hormones, secretagogues, things like that yeah. to, to actually help the mitotic behavior and cellular turnover and all that. But at some point... You want to slow it down, but you don't want to slow it down forever, right? Because you do want those cells to turn over and, right. you know, they talk about all these keywords, autophagy and apoptosis and all that. Mm-hmm. But these, this is, you know, this is real science. This is real you know science. The problem, George, with a lot of the sciences also is that there's a lot of charlatans out there that are playing yeah. on these words and these terminologies yeah. that really no one really understands, right. but very basic understanding of them. They say, oh, well, increase your telomere length if you take this cockamamie bullshit supplement <laughs> and people just just buy it because they're scared and they're like oh this is gonna help me live longer and they don't even know what it means and yeah, meanwhile they're drinking a fifth of whiskey and smoking cigarettes that's right right right, right. <laughs> gotta, gotta negate that so yeah. i'll just take the full pill right here and that'll negate yeah. everything let me take there. this so i can drink my fifth every day yeah, yeah. anyway all right, I got to cut right, the arm on. Um, that's I that's my arm cue. I really appreciate you guys. Yeah, Thank no you for problem. having me on. I got to um, I got to hook George up with uh, Carmen oh, Tuchinek. What's that? I got to hook you up with Carmen Tuchinek. She does the DNA stuff. DNA testing, and, yeah. Yeah, true yeah. diagnostics and and uh, they the epigenetic and epigenome now that's big, right? So yeah, now not only do we have subjective factors for aging, we have objective. So yeah. it's good. We'll talk about that next week. That's thanks, for George. Right, thanks, sir. All right, thanks, sir. All right, George. Take it later. Bye bye. Okay. That was George Myrano. All right. Now, 
Armand, you're getting put in the hot seat because you've been sleeping the whole show. So people are, are not happy about it. <laughs> you better take it. Yeah, my father used to take a nap before he would do his writing at night because he was he would sleep three hours a night because he had to teach and he would stay up all night. You got to take a nap before the show. I think I, I had to run to the courthouse this morning. Uh, I woke up at five. I had, I had court this morning. I had to take it. What'd you do at the courthouse? Out. Just tickets downtown Dallas. So I got there. I had to wake up at five, and it was yeah, long morning. Yeah, so. that's yeah. horrible. They're picking. But my the sleep office. apnea is terrible. I got to do another test because you know my my weight increased a little bit. Like I messaged you the other day, and I'm like, you know, phone, you know, my sleep apnea is getting really bad. So, yeah. are you using a CPAP? Yeah, well, I mean, I have one. I tried it for. I tried. It. I just can't do it. I tried all the different pieces. So, what do you mean you can't do it? Like I, I, I start with the night and I take it right off. So you got to keep it on. Well, I know that. I, I know that, Larry. <laughs> <Anyway. laughs> yeah. What about elevating your cardio? Your your cardio, like, would that help? I think it's a weight thing, George. With him, he's just heavy. You know, yeah. So. I just, oh, I get. Weight. What if he does intense cardio to to increase his? Yeah, but he needs the CPAP, or you're gonna. I need to kill see, I need sleep. He's he he can't keep his his airway open. That's the problem. Yeah, I need, I need a CPAP. I mean, but I used to. Like, I was do, face man. down. I was okay sleeping, but now I got to the point where that's even a, you know, whatever. So I'm I'm gonna go um, do a test next week, just a home test because I yeah. You I you gotta get a CPAP. Picking on a guy, I I think that's horrible that they they leave the guy alone. I used to train a 500 pound guy that in the middle of a sentence he'd fall asleep. Oh wow! All of a sudden, you'd be talking, be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I would keep talking to him. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story about that. Hold on, I I recorded these. There was a guy in in in, in Georgia who was recording these um, workouts that you would get by audio. So you would it was called my body my body beats or some some something like that where you would. Go and, and they would actually record you basically walking people through an entire workout. So I would do chest first, counting reps. Like I was actually personal training them. And he recorded this all on audio. And then he would sell them on iTunes. And then, you know, depending on how many you sold, they would give you a commission check. <laughs> now, supposedly, evidently, from what I hear, from what he told me was um, I was the most downloaded person. And while he was recording me, he flew me in for the day. I think it was I think we did it over two days. We recorded everything. I was so tired from doing this and counting reps and because and, 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 I was basically putting people through my exact workout that I would do that I actually fell asleep while I was recording and I was still counting reps and 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 <laughs> I actually realized I fell asleep and I woke up at some point and and I said did I screw this up he goes I what do you mean screw it up I said I said I fell asleep he goes you never stopped talking <laughs> You must like drunk. 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 No, so when you say I could do this in my sleep, I always say as a joke, I could teach this course in my sleep. I've done it so many times. You could work out in your sleep, probably. You know, you know, we know training so well. You know, I have a friend that used to do that. He'd, even he'd stop at a red light. You know, he'd be driving. And he'd That's stop. scary, though. That's scary, though. Dude. Dude, I'm what still I was on, getting three hours a night, though. I get two, two and a half, three hours a night sleep. That's it. That's when I was a happens. manager for the uh, knife selling company, I used to have to do these group interviews with like 60, 70 people at a time. And I'd run like six of them in a day. Right. And at that time I was working insane hours and getting no sleep. And there'd be sometimes I'd be standing, writing on a whiteboard, doing a group interview and fall asleep standing, but I keep doing it in my sleep. That's pretty wild. And my, my assistant manager would be laughing and tell me afterwards, you slept during the thing and, and I would keep talking. Yeah, that's great. I love that. I just did it that's so many you know times. Well, that's because you're a perfectionist. You even in in your sleep, you were still teaching the course. You know, Armand, do you wake up like with night terrors or choking and stuff like that? Yeah, or? I got yeah, I got the acid. Re I was texting Dave a couple days. Acid reflux, nightmares. I just don't sleep well, man. I just so, Armand. I take I knock myself out at bed with melatonin and ZMA. And uh, and then I use a CPAP. If I don't do that, I'm re I'm wrecked the next day. I can't even function. Yeah, I haven't felt good in a long time. So I, I you know I I got the CPAP about three years ago. Used it for a little bit. Tried the different mouthpieces. It, it just I would no, just, just get the full uh, mask it off just, like twenty just minutes keep, later. So just keep I'm, it up, keep it on. I know. Yeah. I, I know. Let I, me ask I you a question. Now, I know. Let me ask you a question. Do you plan on competing anymore? Dave. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm asking you. Are you planning I mean, on competing? Is it too big? Um, <laughs> you if know the answer is no. So, if the answer, if the answer is no, no then you should just why not just lose weight? That's what I was going to say. Know, I'm not. I'm not. I don't try to. I don't try to carry this weight though. That's, yeah, but you, you can try to lose, lose it. You got to actively lose it though. You have yeah. To yeah. Um, I still got that little thing. You know, you, you never got your pro card. This like yeah. okay, maybe when, another, another year. My son's younger. I'll just go one more time and. To get with you, do a twelve week prep, and knock it you out. Want yeah, maybe. You want to compete again? That's the answer. Yeah, I got it. I mean, I mean, my back is really messed up. Well, Armand, is really that is up. that really the right way to go, man? After all the stuff you, you you've been through, don't you think that could like mentally potentially lead you down the wrong road? No, I agree with you. I mean, no, no, I was no, I was doing good. When I was competing. Yeah, when I stopped competing, that's when it was. You know, yeah. But but what I'm saying is is that is is then is competition the crutch to to you know what I'm, you don't understand what I'm saying because it, when you're competing you're taking all the drugs too. I don't have to take as much as people. He think. can't even do it anyway because he's on probation. So he can't I, even take I think what yeah. I'm mean, oh, okay. to say is it worth. Like, I, I can wanna... take prescription medicine, you know, steroids from my doctor. So just chill for a little bit until you're off probation and then ball out. Well, I've been chilling for I've been chilling for five years, over five years now. Six you years. Can't get off probation. That's a tough one. <laughs> which I is one probably year. Sa- which is probably saving your life long term. So that's probably good. I just can't believe you're this big all the time, dude. You're not even trying. Yeah, yeah I mean, Very big. It's not, I mean, it's not the same type of tissue, but it's the same weight. You know, Dave, Dave knows how it is. But you a lot of mass on you still. Now you still have a lot. You got of a lot of it. Yeah, I mean, I seen your your Instagram. You're you're. You're a big guy, man. I, mean, I think I want to make one, I, one master show, and then if my body can get through it, if I'm not going to force it, but how old are you? Yeah, I think I want to one more eventually. You know, a couple of years so. So you oh, want to get you? your pro? Um, uh, you want to get your pro card in, in masters? You're saying how old are you? I'm I'm four. I'm I'm I'm, I'm almost forty. So um, okay. I'll be off probation in like a year. Or so about that time, about the, about the time. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, I could just get in shape so easily. I just, uh, just why not? You would win. I, I mean, you, win you, the you, you got wide clavicles. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's always a people with wide clavicles always do well. Just you know, I, I would say just for the sake of breathing better. You know, like Dave is saying, and you're going to be on probation. Why not just lose like 20 pounds and then try to you lose know, 20 pounds of fat? Yeah, not like muscle, just fat. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, water. Yeah. Whatever, I yeah. just started last weekend uh, with a boxing class for my son, so we're going to be doing boxing every week. Oh, awesome! So yeah, but you'll get hurt off. doing that, probably. You know that. You, you, you're like, <laughs> no, me. he will get, not box. No, he, will. Oh, he will. He definitely will. Maybe just he <laughs> no. It's going to help pull out his back or his neck. No, or you're like not, not going to do I that. Know Armand's already. Not after unless after I did the, uh, it, you know, I felt great that week. My body did, <laughs> did feel great. I dropped a few pounds, and then, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Not unless he's sparring. No, unless you can probably spar. hold no, your not, muscles. Not sparring, not sparring. No, I'm saying, I'm think, saying, you're not going to get hurt. Just I, regular bo- training boxing, you're fine. If you start I sparring, then right, then that, sparring, I'll get hurt. Just hitting the bags, yeah. you know, because my son's yeah got my son doing it. He just turned four, so he, we kind of went back and forth. With my cool. my buddy, he's a teacher, and it was really good. It was fun. And so that's a sick. That, that's a great that, workout. Lim- a lot more limber that week, so. You're not yeah, worried you're about extending. Like, you're extending your arms out and stuff. I mean, it's twisting. You're not you're not yeah. worried about re-injuring that 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 area that tore strain in your in your leg groin area. Well, they 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 I mean they they just cut me there and they t- took that nerve out. I mean, it's the tendon shredded to that it shredded all up uh, the Gilmore's groin. So they didn't really repair that. It was not it's not repairable. So they just went in there and they just took a uh, part. So you got to be careful though, because you you could it could it could injure it worse again, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's brutal. no, I mean, that I think what, what did he say? I could injure that again. No, no, he said that's done. Those that's all shredded. He just took the tendon out and most of the tendon. And you know, um, I just, yeah, so, I would like uh, to compete. Yeah, Armin, you could probably hold your muscle mass and just, just lean out, just drop the yeah. body fat. You don't, yeah. you don't need to carry you, you won't lose any muscle. What are you weighing? No, I did, that on, I did that on October. I, I just cut some sugars out for a couple of weeks, lost. Uh, about uh, 10, 15 pounds. I did a little photo shoot and just to get some pictures. And that was, uh, yeah. So I lose weight. I mean, my metabolism, my metabolism is crazy. So, um, 
Yeah. yeah. Dave Smith wants to jerk off, so we got to wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> into his, his, his wife may come home and catch him, so we don't want to. You know, we don't want to. But seriously, if you just clean up your diet, you'll. I don't drop actually the, carry drop that much weight. fat. I carry a lot of water retention, so it looks yeah. like that. Mm. I get bloated really easy. Like I carry all the water in my face, and but you, know, well, you I don't, just I don't took carry. that shot that you said that you could gain seven pounds from that. Oh, yeah, I just did a cortisone shot yeah. last week. It put so, seven yeah. pounds on me. Oh yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah. I hate course. Well, I think you would do much better. You all your little injuries would feel so much better if you were like twenty five pounds lighter. Yeah, I feel good when I'm like two fifty five. Yeah, you're too heavy. Yeah. What are you two eighty now? I was like two seventy four. Yeah, you're too heavy. Wow, how, how tall are you? Uh, five nine, five Hello. ten. Holy yeah. man! Damn. <laughs> wow. he's big, he's big. I I'm not big. People, people see me and they're like, "You're not any small." But I no, I you're you're lean too. I, was, I mean, you're not. It was horrible. I I quit when I was 31, so I was supposed to. I was supposed to keep growing, and I so I quit before I way before I reached the prime. So I think my body was supposed to keep growing. So I just cut off the drugs, but I still kind of trained and ate three times a day. So. You know, it doesn't take much once you get past a certain age where your metabolism starts slowing down. Because right. I can eat to clean a, a, a couple days right now and be super lean. My metabolism, as Dave knows, is really, really fast. So I don't think your metabolism is ever slowing down. Mine, and mine hasn't slowed down. I'm at 55. No. It still hasn't slowed down. So no. And so I don't, I don't eat think clean you. either. So I like if I eat clean, I'll get too lean, and then my joints do hurt when I work out. So yeah, because there's not enough water yeah. on the joint. Yeah. I always thought you were taller. <laughs> you look no. like close to six foot. Like no, you... five ten. Wow. Yeah, yeah, five ten. Yeah, one. Well, I would got, go. Dave, me and Dave were doing masters in about a year. Yeah, yeah. Dave, no, I'm not doing it, but I'll, I'll, I'll help you. But I'm not, I'm not doing <laughs> no, it. No, I, I would. Yeah, I would have Dave. One more Dave run. Running. One more run. You need. I, I think you can get the yeah. car. Then you can, you can pull Boston Lloyd and you can turn it down. That was, that was his goal. <laughs> we wanted to win a pro card and say. Yeah. I don't want it. Keep That's it. Stupid. Shove it up your ass. That's what he wanted. The to whole do. annoying thing is, is like, why don't you have your pro? That whole thing. I was like, why did that, they that go? Everybody, annoying. they're giving out pro cards today like fucking crazy. This young girls get pro cards. Everybody, hey, you know, you pay Fuck. enough money, <laughs> you get in the yeah. right category. You know what it is? It's just it's it's disproportionately harder to get it. You know, as a, as a male bodybuilder than it is as a wellness or bikini girl yeah. because there's a lot more opportunities. Right. As a bikini or wellness girl, you know what I mean. Well, Dave, don't you remember years ago? I mean, we you, you get a pro card. You had to either win the nationals, you know, yeah. play win your class, or Every win the U.S. Was, was they gave away like six nine. or seven pro yeah. cards a year. That's yeah. it. Well, there was less more people competing, Greg. Right? More no, people now. It was Way more, more people. It sure. was more elusive, though. Today, forget it. Yeah. Everybody There's and everybody so divisions open. now. All these guys are going into Masters winning, and then they're like, I got my broker. You know, like yeah. I see guys on the internet with this shit. And I'm like, yeah, but you went to Met. You know? I, I know someone legitimately who did eight divisions in one show. Oh, and yeah. Like three Masters divisions, like three Opens. They did Classic. classic they did Bodybuilding. Yeah. yeah. I, it, <laughs> other, it, you know how many how much money they spent on application yeah, fees? Yeah. yeah. Probably a thousand bucks, if if Crazy. not more. And well, they, you know what? The they, promoters, the promoters are licking their chops. They love guys like those. Oh yeah, guys. no shit. That's why they're doing. That's why they're giving out those cards like that to me. I don't know. Right. I don't see. I mean, it. you look it's, at it's you, you look at Tim, now. sports growing, so I'm happy. That's all. Right. You look at ten plus years ago, and then the heavyweight, super heavyweight category looks like the pro level today, not the Olympia or Arnold. But I'm just saying, like, look at just a normal. Well, yeah, the past Arnold, couple pro shows. But that's because it was too hard to get a pro card. So the right. guys that should have been pros were being held back because they only right. gave like one or two per year. Yeah. So they stayed as amateurs much longer. Whereas right. today, you could find a show, there's, there's so many opportunities that all the good guys get pro cards right away. I know. Yeah. Like Edgar Fletcher so, should have had a pro card, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, there's, a million, no, yeah. there's a million guys who should have had a pro card. How many right? times did, uh, so, you know, think about some of the guys that were like DeMeo and, and Flex Wheeler didn't get a, he missed a few times in a row, you know. He, he would have usually been a pro, you know. Well, it took Tony Freeman a while to turn pro, too. Well, Tony had the, the pec tear, but yeah, I mean, right. there but was you guys, a lot of guys that took longer than they should have 
because it was so competitive. You know? right, exactly. yeah. Matt Mendenhall was a white Lee Haney, and he never got a pro card. He, he, I mean, he should have been a pro. I mean, today he would have been a pro, obviously, you know, because mm -hmm. he would have been second. They gave up, they give pro cards for second place. Right, you know, was no oh, yeah. in class either. That's crazy, though. So they, yeah, but you know, you were like pro, and then voice. everybody in the world, everybody knew who you were. You you turned pro, right. everybody knew who you were. Now, yeah. you know, it doesn't, well, not, the magazines too help with that because then you turn pro and you got on the cover of several different magazines. Yeah, who's the most popular or who's the most successful guy to win his pro card? Placing second. That's a good question. And I and I don't really have the answer. So but I'm sure well, one of our viewers probably does. Well, Troy I, say that again. No, no, those guys all want to win. Uh, nowadays it's it's top two in the nationals in each weight class get Oh, a pro top card. two get him. Okay. That's you know, it's only been that way for several years, but um I well, wonder you who walked away, Dave, after your what do you did you have your a second and that's when you, you what, what what was your decision i like? was second just, in nationals before yeah i would i would to tony freeman i would have had a pro card you know yeah competing. and your breaking point was just like i'm just fed up when you know what my shoulders were getting bad and i and i and i felt like i couldn't be better than the year before so i i just bowed out graciously because i didn't want to i don't want to start getting worse you know what i mean it's nothing there's nothing worse than like not being better than you were the year before you know that that's how i looked at it you know well, they yeah. gave Linda Wood Hoyt a, a my pro ego card. Was too, my ego was too big, you know. Well, no, Linda Wood Hoyt won the team that uh, the Did team she? universe for years. Yeah, yeah. Or if they gave someone a pro card, I forget who it was. Uh, yeah, but, but my point is that there's more opportunities today to get a pro card. Yeah. Um, but I guarantee Pretty you, there's been some people who have finished second who went on to be very successful pros. Well, I just, I have to go back and look at the list. Pretty soon them. they'll be on the back yeah. of a milk cart, and you buy a milk cart, yeah. you get a pro card. Dave, back, back then when Dennis Newman turned pro, Craig Titus was second. And at that point, he was the most successful second place person that didn't turn pro because he had more covers of any of all the magazines. Oh, yeah, easy. He easy. Was, yeah, anyone. That's when I met him around that time. Yeah, yeah. He what about my popular. boy Dean Caputo, too? He used to Dean be on Caputo that team. Too. Yeah, Dean would have been a pro, absolutely. Dean Caputo, I mean, yeah, there's a, a lot. He had a lot of mass on him, yeah. I mean, a yeah, lot of people that weren't pro at the time, like, I remember, you know, when I was doing it, like, I had my friends that were pros, and I was had a, I was making a lot more money than them just from different little sponsor opportunities. And I'm like, I'm making way more money than y'all, and y'all are pros, so it's like, you know. That's kind of what happened with Gerard Dente. I mean, he, he also was very good, um, you know, remember – he, he quit, and he just basically started I mean, NHP. Yes, smart. exactly. He decided that, you know, he's going to make more money doing supplements, and he was very successful. I actually worked with him before he quit. Body oh, yeah. yeah. He he should have won the North American the year he, that last year he did it, and, and they That's put him fourth idea. or something like that. He he went crazy. He get, I said, man, you, you got ripped off. I thought – because yeah. Gerard had a problem getting in shape, like, from yeah. behind, and right. that was the year yeah. – the only year that I had seen him, like, with glutes and hamstrings and – so I really thought he was going to win, and, and and then they put him fourth, and he was really pissed. Off. I was pissed that, too. That that was it. He told <laughs> off the powers that be, and he quit. And he never did it again. Yeah. yeah, but you look at these internet guys like the Liver King, even Rich Piana, all those guys. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're more they're they're making more. Struggle. Well, it's Instagram. It's the internet oh, that? that did it. The I mean, internet. Well, you know what, Greg? Most guys would rather be successful on a bodybuilding <laughs> stage than make money. And I know it sounds insane. It's true. But when you're in the midst of bodybuilding, like it's winning insane. and being validated yeah. uh, is the most important thing. You don't care. You, you'll you actually gladly pay people to compete yeah. because you're so consumed with the sport. Now, it's like winning a gold medal. Yes. At a certain point, you realize that the, your success on a stage will translate, if you're smart, into making money. But yeah. when you're doing it in the midst of it, you could care less about the money aspect. Yeah, I, mean, I know that. I competed. Yeah. I don't. I well, you're an athlete. That's a different body, mindset. The body. Yeah, if you were, if you really love it, you know. And then and then when I quit too, it was the the magazine. That's not, that was like the last year, about 2012, 13, that the magazines. Then yeah, that you know that was a fun, that was cool to be in the magazines. And then when that went away, it was right. kind of like, you know, a lot of, of us had you know trouble. Switching over to Instagram, we're like, this is stupid. I'm not joining. And then you know why we trust Armand? You because there were a lot of you guys in the middle. So in other words, you were competing. The magazines became less important, but you guys still loved the magazines and and were validated by them. And then the internet became so you were like tweeners. 
the people who are competing today, they don't even know magazines. So they're, to them, it's all about the internet and promoting themselves on whatever, Instagram, TikTok, oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Oh, I agree with that. That's yeah, look what PJ Braun and, and Aaron Ziggerman did. That right. they, they started off with, with you. PJ and then, never and then we didn't have Instagram. And then Instagram came and they were able to. It's different marketing than it is competing, yeah. though, George. What I'm saying is people yeah. who competed in the magazine era couldn't really adapt that well to the, the internet era. The, but the people who started in the internet era, the, the social media era, yeah. they're fine. They, they adapted fine because they don't know the magazine era. So, right. you know, we happen to know all of it because we lived through it all. And, well, you, you have know, to change. You got to be willing to change. Though, you I evolved. stopped competing at that point. So I never they had didn't have that sweet. They didn't, they didn't get to experience that sweet spot where right. you go to photo right. shoots after your show. Mm -hmm. A couple thousand, right. a couple thousand, a couple thousand. At least you make maybe fifteen thousand after your show to pay back what for what you spent on, and so they never got a touch of that sweetness. So they they just started from the social media era. So they're now, like, oh, this is cool. Know what it is to do a photo shoot with a real photographer with you know makeup and 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 lighting, and you're in the yeah. gym all day. All they know is get the the iPhone out and snap some pictures, you know, outside and put them on my Instagram in three seconds. That's yeah. what the guys today know. You know, that's really yeah. all they know. You know, the real photo shoots where they spray you with water to look like you're. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. We, we, I mean, we, we never thought about. Lost, hey, we lost Jeff Saigo just the other day. Jeff Saigo was a great photographer. You know, yeah. uh, Pear yeah, Banal, Chris Lund, mm -hmm. you know, Robert mm -hmm. Reef, uh, John, uh, Mike Nevue, you know, from Iron Man. So, yeah, Brian who was Mark. the guy that worked for Blackman with the glasses that used to come all the time? Pear uh, Banal. That's Pear Pear. Pear. He's a good guy, man. We worked years. I worked years with that guy. Great, guy. great. One of the, I think he's maybe the best, you know, in the he's business. Guy. Technically speaking, you know. I was competing like three or four times a year for at least 30 years. At that's least 30 crazy. years. Wow. I just that's kept doing it. That's got to be. Did a you do the magazine right? stuff too, Larry? No, I never did. Um, he was kid he was kidnapped during that time period. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let me ask a question: Are any of you guys? Do any of you guys see? For me, I love bodybuilding, but I like I, I I lost my zip for competing, and I never lost my class ever. But I'm saying I I, I lost my zip for that shit. But to me, I would if I had to do it over again, I'd probably go. I wanted like do jujitsu and do all that shit. Cause I used to box when I was a kid at the American Legion with Charlie Gasparino, Fox business. Oh, you my, like the MMA then. Right? I love the MMA shit, you man. Love, I love the, the, the camaraderie everybody. is like the old school gyms. If I had it to do over, like if I was young again, that's what I would, I would go more if, towards. If that. I well, to well, over, Dave's going to put an um, MMA in his gym. And then when you come yeah. down, Mr. You, G's going to run it. Well, I'm too old you now. Got dude. Dude, I, I just, <laughs> I just see all these guys. Nobody comes in like sick killer condition anymore. And I like, I can diet six weeks and get in the nastiest condition. And I'm like, I would just want to go back and compete and just come up there just disgusting looking just to show people how nasty I could, you know, my size might be down. My body parts might, you know, might not look the, you know. Everyone the over 40 is a little, just, it's got shit wrong with them. Don't worry about it. I agree with Armand. <laughs> Armand's right. I agree with Armand. None of these guys come in with it. If you came in with that ridiculous conditioning today, all these guys are so fucking big today. Nice look at Hottie Shoop and look at uh, Nick Walker. Look I, at um, Hottie, but, Derek, Derek Lunsford, yeah. you know. But I'm talking about the fibers through, all through the shoulders. Nick Walker don't have that. Uh, right. A lot of them don't have that. Yeah. I agree with Armand. So, I, I think I think too when you when you get too big too quick. You, I, I don't know about what do you what do you think? Dave? Yeah, it blurs it. it, you, blurs you, it. You, I I don't know. I think I think the small fiber strands they kind of get thicker and I don't I, they kind of disappear in the mix. Yeah, I don't know. My theory is, I mean, my theory is, is the, the drugs. I think that it's a, it, guys yeah. are using a lot more growth hormone. Guys yeah. barely use GH in the nineties because there wasn't a, 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 available. And I think the dosages were lower and people weren't injecting every body part, you know? So yeah. I think we're blurring the, the guys today are blurring a little bit of it. Right. Do you, do you think it's, you think it's the, the cells are holding too much water and it, it, it's and it the gross of, hormone in the insulin is causing it's just everything. Sarcoplasm. I mean, use, using sarcoplasm. 20 IU yeah. Growth hormone to begin with 20 I use. That's crazy. But it, it's yeah. what happens as you, you have so much blood, bigger, but it doesn't look as, as you have so much blood volume that, they are 
Are right. all these guys on insulin? Or round, but take there's like, no definition. But they, they don't, I don't think it's the insulin. I think the problem is 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 GH. And I think there's a lot of site injections. Uh, yeah, stuff yeah. Stuff. No, and it's it's just it's the combination of both. Yeah. It yeah. fills the muscle and full more of blood. drugs. It's more drugs. Period. Look at, you know? yeah. look at the great bodybuilders, even of the '90s, like Lee Priest and 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 Sean Ray and guys. Those guys weren't even 200 pounds. They're like 198. They never took growth hormone either. And, but what I'm saying yeah. is, today, you guy that height would be like, you know, 250 and shit. It's fucking insane. It's not because the human beings evolved since the night. It's just that, like Dave said, they inject We're every body part. They're putting massive amounts of shit in. And when they go off, they look like Pee Wee Herman. You know what I the mean? The suffering. Nobody wants to suffer. I'm not full enough. I'm not full enough. I need to be fuller. I need so to be older you know, today, too. Most of the time, aside from, from the newer guys. Stuff like that. I like it for lifestyle, but as far as for who wins the Olympia, I could give two leaping frogs ass. Unless like my boy Victor Martinez or somebody like that wants to compete. That's my you know, point. Like people are afraid to people are afraid to come in too flat. And yeah. when you're shredded and you have zero body fat on your body, yeah. you look more fibery, yeah. but then you fill up a little bit and it kind of blurs that little extra Right. Oomph that used to have. So I mean, it's a different look today. And and you know what? I don't blame the bodybuilders because the judges are rewarding that rounder, more watery. Well, that's look. all there is, Dave. They do. Well, well, that's Dexter, what they want. Dexter they like a bigger, rounder look. Well, but no. But then you see someone like Hadi come in who looks like cement, and he wins the Olympia. So when that, it, it maybe more Jackson pay said to that. <laughs> when he was competing, he preferred his look in the 90s yeah. but he knows that his 90s look would not be competitive yes, on stage today because he yeah. wasn't he wouldn't be big enough well yeah. let me just, i would take victor martinez's body any day over the week over somebody like hottie chupon i don't give a shit look at how beautiful victor martinez is looks perfect i mean but on. victor in his prime would have beat hottie i mean he's just yeah. not in his prime anymore that's all you know I think we all would. We all would take that. Victor would have would be Mr. Olympia today if he looked like he did. Mr. Olympia, let's be honest. He's beautiful. He's a Victor Martinez. Hottie looks like like this to me, like a fucking ripped stone. Just he's got a different physique. That's all. I mean, but Victor had a beautiful physique, and the judges judge what's what's up there. The best of what's up there. That's right. That's that's like the anatomy. I got to wrap this up, guys. What final words, Armand? Since you were sleeping, most I mean, of the you show. got yeah. the quad sweep, like your anatomy, and then you got like another quad sweep on top of that. Then you got yeah. like all these. Nobody looks real. The it just doesn't look like real muscle anymore. It's just thank you all Armand. shot up. Thank yeah. you. That's why I can't watch this shit anymore. I don't give a shit. I'm you know after like I said, give me a Victor Martinez's type physique, and I'm there. But other than that, I can't watch this shit anymore. Every single one of these guys is so big. And so it's ridiculous. You get guy my right, You know what it is? If these guys are not big enough, then they overcompensate and they do things to make themselves look bigger. And that, that sometimes does not make them better. It just makes them bigger. You know what but I mean? No posing. Nobody Same poses. Fucking thing. Same thing. You get these women at 22 inch arms and shit. That's, dude, that. Anybody that likes you, well, has like, who has 22 inch arms, Greg? What woman? Yeah, like these Russian chicks I see on the internet? They're all like, Oh, yeah, but that girl with the big lips, yeah, the big lips are like this big. You know what I mean? These girls are huge today. <laughs> <laughs> Her lips are so big, that's I can't. Fe- but Greg. That's more of a fetish thing. That's really not a competitive thing. Give me Corey Everson's physique, you know, that well, kind of Greg, body. You know what, man? You're somewhat responsible for this. Look at what you did. Look at, let me be honest. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you ruined everyone, yeah, right, Greg? Yeah. He destroyed. He destroyed bodybuilding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he destroyed it. Oh, yeah, he destroyed it. Yeah, yeah, he destroyed it. Dude, I would never want to look like me. I don't want to look like me. I'm <laughs> fucking. <laughs> I look like Uncle Fester on steroids. Just, you know, <laughs> next week, like hold on. Next mess. week, we're going to talk about how to live a long time, how to look great, yeah. that time, the new generation of drugs. For the future of bodybuilding and what it will mean to bodybuilding, how will bodybuilders look? We're going to get George hey, back on the show. It's going to be a great show. No, what is that? I said, don't sniff no beast. Oh, yes, that's yes, right. don't, do that. don't smoke it. Don't do it. Yeah. All I'll right. Sp- I got to wrap up. Uh, and happy for all this day. everyone for joining hey. us live hey. again today. Uh, Mr. G, uh, when can we expect your cookies to hit the market? I don't know. I'll go when I speak to. Um, I'll call Carl. Uh, yeah, I'm going to speak. Any time. That was. 
that was the that that was the secret ingredient that I told you about. I know. I, I didn't. I wasn't allowed to tell anyone. But Carlos, yeah, I know. Well, he well, Carlos spilled the beans, so I, yeah. I didn't have to worry about it. You know. So I mean, that's you know. So but it's soon to come. We'll all Mr. Be G's going into business with Carlos, and we'll see what happens. It's been a, right. yeah, but Father's Day is coming up. This, this, Thank you. I want right. to. I want to give a shout out to all the fathers that are out there. That, no one just said, posted that about you. Father's Day is next week, Mr. G. I uh, gave you. A, if, if you can play that that song, uh, I th can't. It's because it's copyrighted. We're all fathers. What the American we? Idol Everybody song? What they sing right? about the the, yeah, the Hawaiian guy saying yeah. about his father? Yo. Oh yeah. Can't do it. Oh, that song's great. You guys get. Anybody out there, you got to listen to the song that the, the guy who won American Idol sang with the guy who wrote the song Monsters. It's a dedication to his uh, father. The kid's father, he's 17. The kid, he's now 18. The kid's father died uh, two, two months before he did the show. Oh, wow. and it's, an it's an unbelievable uh, song. And then he did the duet with the guy that, that um, wrote the song together. Larry. Fact, most important job out there is a father. So Amen I don't to that. that. You know? And on that note, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next time. What am I going to say? <laughs> next week. I forgot Happy what Father's I was going to say. You're falling asleep, Dave. I no, like I'm not. You know what? I took some stimuli. I'm completely wide awake because I was falling asleep before the show. And the stimuli, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm – I took like a 10 Prozac. I'm like so freaking wired right now. <laughs> See, I don't do coffee at all either. I don't do any – I do zero caffeine. I usually never do stims. You know what? I took stims and my heart rate – I've been testing my heart rate on my Apple Watch. It went down my heart rate after taking the stims. I think it makes my heart function better, to be honest with you. Know, a little bit of stims is good for you. Not too you much. still have the same stimuli, the same one? Yes, yes. Works amazing. I, know, I, I, I literally feel like I'm on an antidepressant when I take it. So I need an electrolyte replacement, Dave. I need a need a big time electrolyte replacement because of the training that I'm doing. You know the sports you know, has electrolytes, George, right there. Enough, what? enough that I don't start cramping up because I've been cramping. Right. Yeah, absolutely. All right, because my muscles are cramping thing? up at night, big time. You got to take more. You got to drink more. You got to. You know what it is? I salt the shit out of my food, so I never cramp. But a lot of people don't like the taste of salt. But if you can salt your foods, I salt my food with, with iodized salt. What about putting salt, salt in the amino in the amino? If you're cramping at night, you probably have more magnesium. magnesium. You probably yeah, need sometimes. you probably need more magnesium. Oh, mag that's what it is. so magnesium yeah. is what the best I need. thing. To, well, the best thing to do is go for a blood work and see right. what your electrolytes look like on the blood work. You know, and then you then you have a much better idea of what you really need. Otherwise, you're kind of guessing. But how am I? But how? Ninety how times tell? out of hundred, it's a sodium deficiency. Dave, I, how I, are they going to tell if my if my training uh, regimen is sometimes you know I may train four or five hours a day, you know? Well, after and, you go train, go go get blood work and see what your electrolytes are. Right or after you, I like I, like I because yeah. at night sometimes I spar for an hour. I do I do a well, so jiu-jitsu like for an hour. Surf for two. I mean. It's all over the it. you're you're surfing in the in the salt yeah. water. You're probably losing so surfing, much sodium. That is the most that makes me I want to fall asleep after I surf. Yeah, because it's great. <laughs> I want to eat wait, just like they have the teenage mutant ninja turtles. They they, they love pizza, right? Yep. I crave salt after yeah, I surf. Because you're sodium deficient. I'm telling exactly. you, you're not listening to me. So I heard you put salt water too. You can't just go to sleep. You gotta put salt salt in your water. Me. Master you drink, the amino evolved has sodium potassium in it. So if you if you, you I know you drink this, so just drink more of it. That's all. Yeah. yeah. All right. I gotta wrap up. I gotta go. Thank all you right. for joining all us right. live. Love we'll you guys. see you Happy next Father's week. Happy Father's Day to everybody.